Good evening and welcome to the October 21st meeting of the Hampton Board of Selectmen. Please stand with a salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to introduce the board. To my left is Selectman Phil Bean. To my far right is Selectman Mike Clough. To his left is Selectman Mary Louise Wolsey. And to my immediate right uh, is Town Manager Fred Welch. Um, the empty seat is Mike Pierce, and I'm sure he'll be along. Okay, first item on tonight's agenda is a public hearing uh, related to RSA 31 colon 95B, Roman numeral 3, small a, and it's to expect to accept and expend unanticipated monies for the following New Hampshire Highway Safety Agency grants, Hampton Operation Safe Commute Patrols in the amount of $6,084. Dan, is there anything you'd like to say about that? No, this is a standing grant. It's actually an extension. We didn't have to apply for this one. This uh, this grant came in. They, they asked us if we wanted to continue it. Good. And we said yes. So oh. it's, it's been a success. Okay. All the uh, surrounding communities are doing it. You never turn down money. Not free money, no. <laughs> okay, any questions from the board or? No. Uh, I'll take it out to the public. Any uh, questions from the public? Seeing none, back to the board. Um, one thing I will point out that I discovered today when I looked at the, the form that I'm supposed to sign is it says this is to certify that the Hampton Highway Safety Committee has reviewed the attached Federal Highway Safety Project application and is aware of the contents of the application. I sent Tony Chalfie just an email just to say, just like to confirm that, and he's not seen it yet. So what my suggestion is, is, is that um, the board approve this and authorize me to sign it once I've had confirmation right. that the Highway and Safety Committee has reviewed it as per. Right. And uh, I'll be responsive to Dan. You know, I can bop down there the same day you need this. So right. anyway, would somebody like to make also a motion? move. Second. Second by Mike. Any further discussion? Yep. All in favor? Unanimous for zero. Thanks, Thank Dan. you. Public comment period. Anybody from the public wishing to comment? Arthur? <coughs> Art Moody, Three Thompson Road. I missed you last week. Then <laughs> on Friday, Friday, was it? <laughs> I missed you too, Arthur. <laughs> I had a guy uh, about that road race a couple of three Sundays ago. A marathon and a half marathon, 5,000 runners, not all finished. According to a sports article yesterday in the New Hampshire Sunday News, it's the largest in the state of a marathon and a half marathon. And uh, I had a guy at the town office today ask me if all the police and fire he saw running around were being re reimbursed for. And I said, well, I know the police usually are. I don't know about the fire. He said, I, I'd like to see that check <laughs> from the organizers, uh, which uh, I guess is a company in Newmarket that runs these races here twice a year, February and October. Uh, about 10 days before the race, I got a card addressed to local postal car, uh, customer saying that the roads were going to be closed. These, what, 18, 17 roads are going to be closed at these hours and, and of course none of them were really closed legally uh, and they and even when you have the electronic <coughs> billboards that the police deploy and, and uh, uh, process uh, they also say road closures and that's not true now they have 19 roads on here the only one they misspell is the one that was named for a military veteran of <laughs> Vietnam that got killed, Broad which is street. very nice of them. They easily spelled D Street and F Street and O Street. <laughs> the uh, article yesterday in the Manchester uh, Sunday News said that uh, they're hoping to get to 8,000 yeah. this race. Yeah. <clears throat> Five percent, ten percent a year, which means five hundred more this year, next year than this year. And they do have a problem with parking, and they're thinking of having satellite parking and buses haul the runners into the beach. Uh, after those complaints you had 
couple of weeks ago at, at this spot, I think a Warren article would pass, curtailing such races. Maybe even a moratorium on them for a year or 18 months and bicycle runs. Also. The marathon is 26.2 miles. That means that you're going to same streets around and around and around. I think they should be limited to 10 kilometers, 6.2 miles maximum so they won't disrupt residential areas so much. The other article, the other item I'd like to mention is that today I got a, after reading your agenda and the manager's report, I got a report from the finance director, the 375th committee, finance that you're going to be asked to endorse, I guess. <coughs> uh, I was unaware of some of these expenses, even though I attended most of the meetings. Uh, but I know one figure that doesn't reflect the entire revenue from those two days that we sold memorabilia and <coughs> souvenirs in August at Tuck Field. And Mike Schwartz thinks that he that they may have paid some expenses out of cash receipts. But that figure, net proceeds, weekend activities, $2,265. I know for a fact that the memorabilia we sold was $2,400. And that nearly $1,000 was taken in by uh, the dunk tank. So there was apparently some expenses spent uh, out of cash. Good luck. Uh, by the way, I was going to sell the leftover stuff pre-Christmas sale next month with incentives to buy, like free item with a more expensive item. Yeah. But I frankly, I don't know where, where this stuff is. <laughs> <laughs> to um, Arthur's comment and the individual's question where um, all police officers and whatever, um, details or whatever, I know from some of the information that I got after the event that there were 16 um, mm. paid detail officers, so it was yeah. extensive. The ambulance, I didn't see anyone from fire other than the ambulance, which did kind of cruise around in areas where there might be a problem. Right. Um, anybody else from the public? Okay, okay. seeing none. First, the point of announcements and community calendar. Mike? I don't have anything. Thank you, Bill. <coughs> I attended the uh, Healthcare uh, workshop, if you will, uh, at the library. There was some uh, consternation about whether it's Democrat or Republican. I think we're all Americans. And in the future, I would just recommend that people remove their party affiliation when they are requesting to use the library. There was a good brief, and uh, politics really had nothing to do with it. And if it comes to our board, and it's just a suggestion uh, that we remove that DNR thing, and uh, good information can be provided to the citizens. Thank you, sir. Okay. Bye. Sorry, Louise. Okay. First appointment of the evening, Mike Swartzer, Finance Director, first item, monthly financials. Mike? Good evening. I'm here to talk about the September 30th, 2013. Um, financial statements. Nine this is the ninth month of 2013, and so the target is going to be 75 percent. We're three quarters of the way through the year. The month's total income was $686,000. Motor vehicles was at 243, which is 29,000 above budget, and 34,000 dollars than a year ago. On a year-to-date -day basis, we're now 7.3 percent above the target. Other major contributors, land use change tax at $133,000. Interest on taxes, 31. Building permits, 11. Land closure grants at 62. Departmental at 55. Parking lots, the final number is whittling down to 28. The LGC refund of property liability insurance, which related to the 2010, is 89000 And real estate trust at $37,000. On the expense side, 
at the end of September, the operating departments without the debt service was at 72.6 of the budget, which is 2.4% below the target of 75. I'm waiting for Michael to see if he agrees with my math this month. <laughs> <laughs> Let me double check. That's an easy one. <laughs> that was an easy one. Um, I did do the year-end savings. It's showing an under-expenditure of $478,000. The same number of September 12 was $520,000 under-expenditure, or basically it was about 10% more. I believe the this level of the under expenditures to be reduced as we go through the last third of the year, or the last last quarter of the year, and as always, continued fiscal conser conser um, yeah. conservatism yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is indicated. Um, MIS, the group of equipment accounts, the repairs through replacements, now at 80.7% of the budget, and I still believe that at the end of the year, the estimate for the overall department expenses will be at or slightly above the 100% level. Some of that is due to the funding of the personnel. We did bring on a full-time person this year uh, midstream. Personnel administration, the group of accounts related to the New Hampshire retirement system, is still running between 5 and 8% below the budget. Medical insurance. The health insurance line is just slightly over the budget level at 76.2, which equates to $32,000. This will be offset with under expenditures in the workman's comp and liability insurances. I estimate those to be at 56000 So the overall year-end department variance should be minimal. PD continues to run below budget, 2.9%, with all of the regular wage accounts at or below the month's target. In support services, the PT, the part-time special officer wages, and the summer coverage full-time accounts are both running below expected levels at 80.7 at 66.6 after completing this summer season. M monies will continue to be incurred in those, but at a much lower rate. The $23,000 purchase order and new equipment traffic control is for the installation of the emergency equipment in the recently purchased replacement cruisers. Fire department also running significantly below budget at 6.5%. Many of these costs do have a seasonality factor I always point out the holiday pay that's 85000 It gets paid out later in the year, so therefore we're waiting for that. The fire department overtime expense continues to run be below their year-to-date target at 56.1 versus the 75% target and is $31,000 lower than 2012. The largest contributors to this variance are the two overtime at wage accounts, overtime <coughs> wages, and o OT callback, which combined are at 37% of the budgeted year-to-date target. So in essence, they're running at half yeah. of what they, what they have for target. Public Works, Highways and Streets is within budget overall at 69.5, but has specific accounts, building maintenance, diesel fuel, vehicle maintenance, and replacement equipment that are all over the 100% budgeted level. In the sanitation, slightly over year-to-date budget at 75.9. Some significant accounts in wastewater, which is electric, sludge tipping fees, supplies and expenses and vehicle maintenance are approaching or at 100% of the budget level also. Solid waste transportation now reflects the summer season and that increased volume is now evident by the tipping fees coming in at 79.7% where it was running way below the target. Um, I have other things to cover so what I can say is basically this in the revolvers there's really no major changes in the four revolvers and Basically, I open it up for questions. Okay, questions for Mike? Yeah, I can ask if you, Mr. Chairman, if you'll uh, allow me. Sure. Um, on page 16 of uh, 12 of 16, I noticed that in transfer station is uh, there's about uh, oh wow <clears throat> a big chunk of them they're way, r running way over budget, and uh, <clears throat> I think we're going to have to look at that and talk about that considerably at some point in time. It's all reported as factual information here from Mike, so I'm not questioning his numbers. It's just that we have a problem in that arena. And I just wanted to point that out. <clears throat> and then on page six, uh, 13 of 16, we have uh, Parks and Recreation at the bottom there, uh, 4520. And I've noticed that <clears throat> the overtime wages and the telephone and a few other things are just running over there. We're going to have to keep a closer eye on Parks and Recreation, apparently, too, because 
if everybody keeps running over at 110 percent, which some of those are in both cases, guess what? We're going to run out of money. We can't do that. It's going to take some tighter controls here is what I'm trying to say. <clears throat> we want to make it to the end of the year in because we can't go over the budget. That's, I'm not mistaken, that's the way the rules are written in New Hampshire. And I'll, I'll make one other comment uh, before I yield to somebody else that wants to complain about the money and so forth. Um, I was uh, at a uh, cable channel meeting not too long ago, so we're going to probably take a little bit of money out of that to buy some more equipment at some point in time, just to give everybody an update. So it may not be, <clears throat> uh, what you have, $12,000 over? Uh, it probably won't be like that when we get done buying what we think we need. <laughs> so that's all I have to say about that. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, oh, Bill, generally, Bill one? was next. I mean, I don't want to. I have no questions, Mr. <laughs> Chairman. I, I have just two observations on the um, uh, encumbrances. Thank you for pinching them really, really tight, which is wonderful. And I'm on the uh, Muni insurance and the health insurance. I'm going to have some remarks to make regarding that and this PLT mess uh, later on in the evening. That's not your problem. But thank you. I think it's a good report. Um, I have a couple, Mike. Um, within the last meeting or two, we had made a motion um, to essentially apply roughly what I had calculated at at about $34,000 in grant money, uh, a FEMA grant related to a February 8th um, snowstorm um, to essentially allocate that as a credit within the DPW budget, much the way you've done it in fire and police and whatever, and to help deal with the overtime problem. I didn't see that on this month, but is that something which you're aware of and will be posting next month? I, I believe it was motion during the month of October, and okay. so I will... Yeah. Uh, we That'll show up. On I, I'm aware of it, and yes, okay. that's fine. Um, question on the um, bank buyback program line in 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 personnel, and I've got a note on the front here. I'm not sure where the exact page is. On that. Let me get to that. Page three of sixteen. Yep. Okay. The question is right. That's got an actual year date of 131,000 and a budget of 120,000. There's also, I know, a cutoff date where people have to turn in what they'd like to sell back to you by October 1st or whatever. My question is a timing question. The, the, the requests that they make leading up to this recent October 1st, does that end up being a 2014 expense and we're done for 2013? Correct. Okay. Um, on the um, being underexpended 478000 and so on, I just wanted to reaffirm that um, we had agreed that in the, um, when you come in in November for your report that you will be providing us with a list from the department heads of items that they wish mm -hmm. to purchase kind of as their year-end spending or whatever. Correct. Okay. Um, just a, a comment and observation. Um, lifeguards um, ultimately came in about four thousand dollars underspent in relation to the budget. That was the one where the budget was eighteen thousand, the request was twenty-two thousand. We had, had 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 knocked that down back to the same level of eighteen thousand, and it actually came in four thousand dollars under the eighteen thousand. Um, Mike, could you turn to um, page fifteen, the list of Warren articles, and I have a question, which relates to the um, Exeter roads. Stuff. It almost appears to me to be a duplication, but um, maybe not. On page 15, if I go down the 2013 budget line, mm -hmm. the first thing I hit is the $300,000 on the roads um, after reserve contribution. And then under that, there's an additional $75,000 um, related to the Exeter Road survey. Now that if, if you add up the numbers in, in this column, both are included in the total at the bottom, 859722 under total capital outlay slash warrant articles. But 
that $75,000 related to the Exeter Road survey wasn't a separate article. It was actually a withdrawal. It was authority in, in, to withdraw. In right, in relation right. to 300000 So that, on the surface, that appears to me to be a, 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 mm. a duplication in the total amount. Extra money. Okay. Well, and, you're, and you're correct. Okay. Right. What you're not seeing is that I also have income side, which would be the withdrawal. Okay. So I need somewhere to book mm -hmm. okay. the 75000 yeah. to, and that's why you'll see that they both carry the same uh, account number at okay. 1307. Okay, and that's so, fine. Yeah. And so it's offset that way. Okay. Yeah. Um, just a, another observation and a comment. The um, combined, I'm going to call them the PD um, summer lines and support services, mm -hmm. the, the, the specials line and the line immediately under it, the um, full-time uh, officer summer support. The combination of those two um, came in September year to date, which presumably is most of it is done, at whatever at this point, um, $90,000 um, under the budget amount. So to the extent that, that we are successful in attracting more specials going forward, um, there appears to be um, lots of money available to make things safer down there. But $90,000 was the amount that's remaining in the combination of those two accounts as of the end of September. That's it. Thank you. I have a question, Mr. Chairman. I come in a little bit late. What happened to the hearing? Are we all done with the hearing? Um, yes. Okay. It was approved. Okay, done. Thank you. Okay, Mike. Uh, next item, financial accounting of the 375th Celebration Committee expenditures. Um, I prepared and distributed on October 9th uh, a final accounting for the 375th. Um, basically, the 375th Committee started out the year with $20,000 available to them, which was the net money left over. Um, in 12, we had the $20,000 Warren article, and yeah. then some monies were spent against that. Mm -hmm. And then I needed a vehicle to um, bring the dollars in and out of. And with consultation with the town manager, the treasurer, the 375th, what we've used for the reporting purposes and also the accounting purposes is the Fund 23, which is a revolver, I'm sorry, a special revenue fund, uh, which is called Founders Day. Mm -hmm. It had a similar... Um, objective, et cetera, and it has been basically dormant for several years. Mm -hmm. So when you start out with $20,000, um, I picked up or we booked $5,899 of income, which would then bring you to $26,000 available. From that, we spent $31,000 in 13, dollars $5,500 for merchandise, almost $11,000 for entertainment, $4,000 for advertisement, I call infrastructure seven seven thousand dollars, which is mm -hmm. the tents, mm -hmm. the yeah. et cetera yeah, type so. rental. Uh, we actually had town labor involved at two thousand dollars, and then I had seven hundred dollars miscellaneous. So we spent thirty one thousand dollars, a net loss or a net negative of five thousand dollars. Where this is a special revenue fund, and this is where we've kept it, we have basically one vehicle to take care of this. At the end of the year, since I do not believe there will be any further funding coming through Warren Articles or whatever, that I request that this, this account, the fund, uh, Founders Day Fund 23, be shut down. That will cause a $5,000, the negative, to actually move up against the general <coughs> fund. And so it will take $5,000 from the undesignated fund balance that's existing now and reduce that at the end of the year. This is the normal procedure for this type of affair. Okay, questions, comments? Uh, quick, yeah, why would that not just go against the 20,000 Warren article authorization? We've Obviously it's overspent, but. Right. The Warren article actually was transferred into, in 2012, I expensed $20,000 of the Warren article and literally put it into this fund. That gave you the money because you were running out of time. You had a two-year article. Okay. All so right. So I okay. expensed Got you. the article, okay. put it here, gave you viability you. And, and use of the money. So in the 20000 is the okay. 20000 Thank you. That's it. 
Other questions? Or? Uh, yes. Um, I assume that this 375th met once in a while listening to Arthur, and they have a good idea of what they were spending and not spending, and uh, somebody obviously wasn't keeping track of the checking account, apparently, to run over $5,000. I'm not exactly happy about that part, uh, and, but I'm just curious how they can... If I would draw, draw by checking account at the bank, the bank says, uh, wax me pretty good, usually with a nice fee, and wax me and then doesn't pay the check besides. How did they get this money spent past the amount they had without somebody whacking them? Right. So what you had was you had, you had the time frame coming. Uh -huh. You were cutting checks for the bands, the tents, etc. Yeah. There was also the anticipation mm -hmm. that there would be more income coming in. Mm -hmm. And so therefore the anticipated income did not reach the level of the actual expenditures. I guess the, that's a good an answer I can take to the bank when I try to explain my overdrawn check account, right? That I, the money hasn't come in because the anticipated revenue didn't exist. Yeah. Is that the way you explain that, Mr. Payne? Anyway, I think that's a real good question. I don't see how we can do that. I'm obviously losing track of how we control the bank account here. I had authorized expenditure requests, yeah. which in essence are bills, yeah. and I paid them per their, their approval cycle. Yeah. And since there was, as I said, anticipated revenues, mm -hmm. until you get to the other end, mm -hmm. you really don't know. So where would I say, okay, you only had 20000 you have yeah. to stop now, yeah. but you can't hire those bands that you know, et cetera. I was I was not the controlling point. The the three seventy fifth committee was the control point. I appreciate that, but it would seem to me because it, selectmen always get blamed by for everything goes wrong in this town, especially when we had one of the previous chairman on the budget committee. I would assume that we're going to get blamed for this too, and it didn't come to this board that I'm aware of. Do you remember anything coming to this board about overdrafting that account? You had some cash in the mix there, too, Mike, and I have no idea how that played out. I, I think I can offer an explanation or, or, or a little bit of, of, of insight, not that I can satisfy your concerns, but whatever, but there are two things. One is, is, is in their spending, they anticipated revenues, mm -hmm. okay, and, and, and spending those revenues. Mm -hmm. One of the, the problems that they would have to deal with is a major portion of those revenues don't come in until the day of the event, okay? And by design, mm -hmm. the, the spending is had to take place that? in advance <coughs> of that. So basically part of the problem is, is, as it turned out, you know, with the benefit of hindsight, they over-anticipated their revenues and that money mm -hmm. was spent right or wrong, okay? If you wanted to resolve this problem in the future, the, the way you would approach it if you're running a business is you would simply be very conservative in what you estimated your revenues to be, yeah. spend accordingly, and end up with, with a surplus when you were done if your revenues came in at a higher number. So that, to the extent, we don't run into this kind of stuff very often, right. but I, I think that's one thing you can do. The second thing, and I talked with Dick DeRocha, 2114, $2,114 dollars of this you'll notice is listed as labor. And Dick indicated he was of the understanding, that, and this is basically, from what I understand, overtime of town personnel. Mm -hmm. It was Dick's understanding that that was going to be billed within the um, department operating accounts as opposed to the DPW. So when this 2,000 of this 5,000 hit, that was not anticipated, um, you know, at all. So that's that's the other piece. but. Um, Mike, when, just out of curiosity, when is the last time we had a situation like this where we had kind of a, a volunteer group as opposed to a department head and a, and a Warren article under Fred that we had to deal with? I couldn't think of I'm one. Not, I'm not coming up with one. Right. Not that doesn't have a very specific budget that they go up against, not one that was going to be having anticipated right. revenues and expenses. Right. So I cannot think, I think of one in my you know, term. I, I think we might dig deeper if we had you know, a couple of these a year, one every couple of years, but, and I think we learned a little bit from this. Unfortunately, it's only $5,000, so it's, it's very manageable. 
Um, but I also I, had conversation. I'm sorry, conversation with the Mr. Rice from the 375th, and he's anticipating potentially trying to lower this uh, deficit through other means. Who, who is kind of running the show at, at this point? Is that is Fred running the? He's the contact I have right now who I've been dealing with in regards to these things. I mean, there should be somebody that's in charge. Uh, I mean, because there is still, you know, stuff to sell, and, and Arthur said he didn't know where it was or whatever. We One thing I asked Fred is, is who were the selectmen reps that, that we appointed, um, and, and are they still there? And, and nobody who the Board of Selectmen appointed is, is still on the committee. So there are no, I guess it's Arthur, David O'Connor, and uh, Fred. That right. are the remaining three members, but I think that it, it maybe this is something you can look into, Fred. I, I think somebody ought to, you know, volunteer amongst those three, or maybe we have to ma make an additional appointment or something to be in charge. Because if, if nobody's in charge, then you know we'll probably never sell the stuff or whatever. We do need one more so we can have at least a majority of the committee appointed. Okay. The committee is seven. We need at least four. So. I, mean, I, I don't. I, 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 also, Mr. Chair, if I may, I think that. If we do this again, I may I suggest that we have some little hook in there that we can have some kind of an accounting. In other words, if they think they're going to go with the budget, come in and tell us, tell the public. And we like to keep the public in the loop when we're spending their tax money. I mean, if, if uh, the chairman mentioned, well, it's only $5,000. If it's only $5,000, he can take it out of his billfold and we'll all be even. So, I mean, I just, I have no problem with running over a little bit here and there. But it comes from someplace else when we run over on the account. It has to, that's $5,000 we had to take out of something else now. So, I mean, I'm not complaining about the event. I thought the event was wonderful. But I think we need to have a little bit of an accounting as we go along, is all I'm saying. We should have left you longer in the dunk tank. That would have made up the difference. <laughs> well, I made a big, I made more money than you did that day <laughs> in the dunk tank. Um. <laughs> and, we can, and we can create a cautionary memo for the 400th anniversary committee. Hmm. Um. Question, are all the events complete? I don't believe so. Yeah, because I, I remember well, that it wasn't just the month. August it, event. It, that it there were, which yeah. is another reason to have, you know, a proper number of members on it. And the other thing is I, I did look at the Warren article, and there is a requirement um, in the Warren article for a final report. It doesn't yeah. relate, you know, that wasn't necessarily referring to the finances, I don't think. I believe that's being worked on by Mr. Rice and group. Well, October 14th has come and gone. I didn't see any celebration there. So. Well, who authorized the, the 1500 out of the Founders Day? I, I think that I didn't hear any selectmen's motions being discussed. That That's another. I have one other question beyond that, but mm -hmm. it would seem to me that that would have, should have been something that came before the well, board of selectmen if that's there, where you had it. There were quite a number of people involved in that years ago. We sold a lot of hot dogs to make that 1500 bucks. And it's a uh, little short-sighted that these guys just walk in and take it. I have to say that it was. I know it's been sitting my, there a my, long time. I needed a vehicle. Yeah. And I did not expect it to come through this way. Yeah. Well, I'm not too pleased with it. I was involved in that for a substantial amount of time and effort. And, you know, that money was there because of that committee and all the work. Some of the people that were on, involved in it have moved out of town, but. And I wasn't in the committee itself, but mm -hmm. I ended up donating a lot of work and time. When was that? Am, am I correct from a technicality standpoint that this should have been approved by the selectmen before it was used? Uh, I guess so. I don't know. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I, did, I mean, I, I, even on a technicality, not I just in principle or whatever. Yeah. Um, one other question I have is, Using the unassigned fund balance to to pay off the underspending five thousand or more T-shirts are sold. At <coughs> I was always the understanding that the only way you could use the unassigned fund balance was to reduce taxes. C can we do that? This has been done. There was we had another um, account that was in a deficit position a couple years ago, and that's how the auditors closed it. Closed okay. it out. Yeah. So so if if we were to approve this tonight, then that will be. Um, reflected right up front in the 2013 audit, then that's done. Yeah. Yeah, that would lead to another question, my main Mr. Jim. What is the unassigned balance right now? Any idea? 
Uh, I can only give you basically last year's balance. I don't have any idea what it's doing right now, and it was a little over $4 million. Okay. And would you like to send us an email or something or give us that information sometime soon? In regards to what last year's balance was? No, what, what, what it is right now at this minute, because if we... Like, it, doesn't, it doesn't exist right at the moment. Right. It's a net number that is arrived at after you close out all of your accounts right. at the end of the year. It's whatever the quote-unquote income is, which mm -hmm. is income minus the expenses. Right. That is going to be either added or subtracted to last right. year's balance. Plus, there's adjustments potentially for uh, anything that's getting reserved, um, et cetera. So, therefore, I cannot... I cannot give you that number. But you can take the last year's ending balance and any, any modifications have been made since and give us that number. Michael, it's it's a moving target that I cannot <coughs> generate for you. Yeah. Let's Mike, Mike, well, just tell us what last year's ending balance was and I'll guess the rest of it. Then. Yeah. It, Mike, How's just, that? just so you know, Mike's not being difficult. No, in, I know in that. municipal accounting, that is a number that's calculated once, once. a year mm -hmm. at, the, at the end of the year. So at, at the end of right. 2011, that number was a little over $5 million. Mm -hmm. At the end of 2012, that number was a little over $4 million. You a keep saying a little over four. What was the number is my only question. Oh, yeah. No, we can get It's right in the $4 million. 045? I was going to say 042. So, yeah. So, and, and, and that's certainly something. I'll write a note and I'll send you an email. It's Good. in the audit. It's, You've got a copy the of the audit. Around and around we get the uh, simple little question with a simple but, little but I think Thank you. Th the reason I'm familiar with this is I asked oh, Mike, six. oh, God, it must have been a couple of years, the same question because I just kind of assumed it was like, you know, um, private sector accounting where every month you're making adjustments to your balance sheet and you are, that's not the way it works in municipal accounting, particularly with the unassigned fund balance. It's something that is calculated once a year at the end of the year. I know that's hard to, you know, Mm -hmm. I, don't in I don't have a problem understanding okay. it. I just want to, want to know what the number is. I agreed to, to send that to you. Okay, you. anything okay. else? No, we have Okay, no. we, we do have the issue. Mike was, was looking for us to approve using the um, unassigned fund balance to make up the deficit in this fund um, of, I would assume, uh, an amount which would be a maximum of, of $5,019. Would somebody like to make that motion? So moved. I'll second it. Um, everybody wasn't rushing in to, to second it. Do we need discussion on that? No, I think it's it's sticking in all of our craws, but we might as well go ahead and do it because he has to do something. Right. Mike has to finish it off. I'll vote to support it in that reason only. Mm -hmm. Right. I okay. don't like it at all. All right? in favor? Thank Unanimous. You. Okay. Um, final item under Mike is I just asked Mike to give um, a little bit of an overview of, of, of the process associated with setting the tax rate and the status of where we're at. It's changed um, quite a bit in the last couple of three years, and it, it, it's changed, um, I suspect, from what I have heard from the way it was done in the past. So I just wanted the board to understand the way that, it, that it's done and where we're at and whatever, and we're okay. kind of at a critical juncture based on DRA's state. So. When I first was in Government County, I've been in Kensington, okay, because I was just like when I helped set tax rates there, I helped set tax rates here. Um, we used to travel to Concord, go up to the DRA when we got an appointment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. That world has changed. Oh. Um, they come to us. Uh, well, in a lot, a lot of ways they do. I'm getting to the end of the story, but I'll, I'll give that portion. Um, we literally discuss any changes over the phone in regards to the MS4, which is our income. Yeah. Any changes that we want to deal with in regards to um, add or taking money in from the uh, undesignated fund balance and then also if there's any changes to the overlay. Those are really the only things that you can play with. Mm -hmm. Other than that, everything is set. Once you pass your budget, once you pass your warrant articles, there's very few things that you can deal with. So what happens is you make, they gave you a call and you make whatever changes there are, and then they literally send me a spreadsheet that is the town portion, and I fill in those blocks, and it comes up with the tax rate, and then I send it back. Oh, my. Now, included in that is the school budget, which is the local, and it's also the regional. Yep. Those numbers are set 
when the numbers are, are given from the Department of um, Education, mm -hmm. the county number, yep. that's set, and then you do have the precinct. And the mm -hmm. precinct commissioners have their input on that. Right. Now I'll go to the front part. We submit forms during the year. They're all MS forms. Yep. They're the budget, there's what was voted on, what's the income. Mm -hmm. The schools do the same thing. I recently went in and reviewed the, t the town of Hampton. All the forms that are necessary for setting the tax rate are there for the school, the town, the precinct, and the county. They also then create a queue when all our numbers and all of their numbers are ready, they create a queue and say, okay, these people will now be eligible to get their tax rate set. There is no one in the queue at this time. The reason for that is the Department of Education's numbers, and that was one of the yeah. issues that was coming out through those um, notifications. Those numbers are still, as far as I know, not there. They're not finalized. They're not incorporated. But what will happen is that at some time, and I keep watching this queue, we will start, people will start to, to be put in the queue and have their tax rates set. Our 2012, last year's tax rate, was set on November 8th. Okay. Okay? That's not Blake. bad, actually. If the pattern follows, where the, the state has said that they're going to potentially, potentially start doing small tax, you know, some of the tax rates yeah. later this week, that's a week behind what it was last year. So if, potentially if we follow the same pattern, right. I'm saying that we might get our tax rate on November 15th. So we're slowing down the revenues yeah. because we then have to send out the tax bills. Correct. Right. Correct. So it takes time, once you get the rate, mm -hmm. then it takes time to generate all the bills, mm -hmm. get them out, and get them, mm -hmm. and then the money starts to turn around. Mm -hmm. To me, the end of November is a critical date. Oh, yeah. Because there's a 30-day 30, 30 receivable. Yes. Mm -hmm. One, we need our money. Two, we also want people to be able to pay their taxes so that they will then be able to income do, their, do their year. income tax deductions. Yeah. So at this time, all our forms are in. We'll end up in the queue, but there's nobody there yet. <laughs> yeah. And I believe that mid-November, we should get a tax rate. Yeah. Now, there's one saving grace for people with the income tax, because they can pay. We can accept money now. Yeah. The treasurer can... And then a tax collector can in anticipation of taxes. So worst case scenario, they could roughly pay what was paid on the last bill. Because we went through that all in 87, so at least the tax yeah, collector has that authority. It doesn't appear we're even going to be close to having that kind of a... I, I don't see that as... The DRA, the last I saw, they had given a date of... of um, October 22nd, which is tomorrow, yeah. when, when they anticipated having all the information from, uh, That's from the yeah. Department mm -hmm. of Education. And, and I don't know if, if you've looked at the same location I have, but if you go on the DRA website, mm -hmm. there's a link to the so-called um, tax queue. Mm -hmm. And when you click on that link, you get an error. Yeah. So I assume... No, actually, <laughs> uh, what you have to do is you have to change the security on your macros Oh, allow okay. all macros, okay. which is not a very good thing to do from a security uh, from right. security set. But I do. I open it that way. Okay. I check, close it, I reset. And, and so there are none in there now. There is zero. Yeah. So. So, all, all indications are that it's not going to be. So a, the one question, though, Mike, is at what point in time do we as a board give you guidance on how much money, if any, we wish to surrender we, we to have, or have we already? I can respond to that. We yeah. we we recently to offset. We the we tax recently rate. agreed to the recommendation of the finance director mm -hmm. and the assessor to increase the overlay amount to seven hundred and fifty thousand so dollars. Basically, we've already. We done did it. that because there was, if there was adequate money in the unassigned fund balance, yeah. we would not have done that. So I, I thought that was implicit in our discussion that I, day. Well, I just didn't realize the new yep. system. Yep. So now that so now you have the guidance you need, so we just stand in the queue to get our hand out. If, if something goes outside of what I would say is the tolerable, yep. I will definitely be talking with all of you. Okay. Okay, but right now from my, for the town portion, I feel very confident that we're going to be within a very acceptable range of, uh, 
slightly slightly below what I believe to be last year's okay. tax rate. Yes. Mike's most recent look at that, and I don't think anything's changed. Mm -hmm. Last year's municipal tax rate was was seven dollars and fourteen cents. Yeah. What he's forecasting now is seven dollars and five cents. I think it's seven, seven, I'm Six moving around. It might be seven nine. Okay, but, but still e either it's, it's, way, it's we're, right we're like there. at or below yeah. what last year was. And so. that I keep saying that's the town portion. Right. Yes. right. I don't know what the school is going to do. The right. county I know is up a small percentage, yeah. and then it all depends also. So what would it have been without the LGC benefit, roughly? Um, Thirty-nine cents more. Thirty-nine. We picked cents. up a million dollars in income, of which the LGC is a <laughs> significant factor. So if I pull the LGC out, it's going to be another fifteen cents higher. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, it was big. That's all yeah. about the revenue. Right. Yes, ma'am. Okay, yes. thank you very much, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Good evening. Okay, next appointment is uh, Keith Noyes, DPW Director. Um, Keith approached me just at the start of the meeting and asked if we could shift around the order of his um, agenda items, starting off and start off with the um, mill pond. Old Mill Pond Grist Mill Dam yeah. project and then mm -hmm. um, following the completion of that, go to the two items, one being the snow plowing bid and the other being the um, letter of deficiency. So based on that, I assume we're going to start with the Stevens Associate presentation. So if you want to say anything, Keith. Sure. Uh, I'm going to keep it short just so that I give the uh, presentation enough time to do, um, to, to give it complete. Um, but before I introduce the engineering team, I wanted to thank and introduce uh, some people from the DES uh, that have come tonight. Uh, Chuck, Chuck, Chuck Corliss is here from the Dam Bureau. Deb Lozell from the River Restoration Coordinator. Uh, Kevin Lucy, New Hampshire Coastal Program. And Cherie Patterson from the New Hampshire Fish and Game Department. So they'll be available to respond to any questions relating to um, state laws or regulations. But so now I'm going to actually ask um, Bob um, Stevens to come up, and he's going to just give a few words, and then he's going to have his uh, project engineer actually do the presentation. Well, good evening, everyone. <coughs> um, we're here tonight to br briefly present the results of our report, which I'm mm -hmm. told are available online. We've got them. Yeah. Right. We have a new version of it. There's a couple of page numbers that were wrong, and we corrected a few minor things. Um, and I'm, I've asked Keith to post the newer version of it on, online. Um, essentially, what we found was we conceived of several alternatives, um, two decommissioning alternatives, uh, five uh, repair alternatives, and a, a, um, a sort of business alternative or a, 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 a different approach. A different approach would be for the town to divest from the dam, and um, which would mean to sell it or turn it over to an interested party. Uh, I assume you have long, a long list of interested parties who are willing to buy a <laughs> no, broken but, down dam. But they do, uh, they do come up. Um, dams are sometimes uh, acquired by associations or nonprofits, and it, it is possible. It's possible that the town could find one interested enough to take it from you. It's possible that uh, the town could uh, actually save money by paying someone to take it from you. Uh, the other alternatives, however, the decommissioning, we conceived the two alternatives for that, and um, we came up with an estimate of about three, uh, $300,000 in today's dollars for short-term short cash outlay um, for the most cost-effective alternative. and. Um, for our repair alternatives, we came up with an estimate of about $450,000 in uh, initial or short-term cash outlay for uh, repair for the lowest cost alternative. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to Jim Turner, who's going to explain the details of our study to you, and uh, we'll be glad to answer any questions that you have after. Thanks. I did provide copies of the uh, PowerPoint presentation here on this mm -hmm. table if anybody wants to get around a copy. Okay. Yeah, it was, uh, there we go. <laughs> oh, that was working before. I'm sure the technology works here. Yeah.
Well, do we do the dam? We have to buy a new computer. <laughs> On your computer, you just want to flip it back and forth from uh, local con viewing to screen and see if that works on uh, con in the control system. Yeah. yeah see, it's not fine. There it is. Ah. There we go. <laughs> Okay. Magic every time. It's, it's called magic fingers. I'm good, aren't I? Ask me. Yeah. There it is. All right. <clears throat> so briefly, um, the outline. We'll I'll go over the background and the scope. Um, we'll go through the concept alternatives. Show you what they look like. Um, again, go over the estimated costs and um, summarize the hydrology and hydraulics and uh, go over the other factors that we came up with along the way. Um, background and scope, the, the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services, Dam Bureau, had issued a letter, letter of deficiency to the town July 11th, 2012. Requires the town to repair or decommission the dam uh, to address deficiencies that, uh, that they identified. Um, in response to that, uh, the town hired uh, Stevens Associates mm -hmm. to do an initial study of alternatives, which we've completed October um, this year. The purpose was to conceive of the alternatives, um, evaluate selected factors and costs uh, for the town's consideration, and um, going forward, the town may select one or more alternatives for further study and or to proceed with design, um, which would then go to permitting and construction. Um, our scope included generally inspecting the dam, hydraulics and hydrology analysis, uh, conceiving the alternatives, uh, estimating costs, and evaluating some other factors. The, the other factors would be um, historical factors, um, some endangered species uh, factors, uh, infrastructure, land ownership, um, and we met with, um, with DES and New Hampshire Fish and Game representatives. Uh, we also had an initial public meeting on uh, July 18th um, that uh, much of the public attended. Um, going right into the alternatives, uh, as Bob mentioned, they are to uh, divest ownership, sell or transfer the dam, five concepts of repair, and uh, two concepts for breach and decommissioning. Um, going into the table, the table lists the alternatives on the left, estimated, uh, average, short-term, cash outlay, so that's on design, permitting, and construction uh, in the middle, and uh, long-term outlay, generally operation and maintenance over a, a 30 year life that we, uh, we assumed. Um, going down the, the list of alternatives, uh, again, the, on the left, the, the cell dam, transfer ownership, um, decommissioning with where we breached the dam through the spillway, um, being the second um, least uh, costly option for the short-term cost. Um, three options where we widen the crest upstream, um, followed by a decommissioning if we went through the left end of the dam, and then down the bottom is a, a downstream buttress repair and a concrete wall repair. Um, one, one thing to note here, we'll have more of these um, repeated short-term costs on the, the drawings coming up to remind you what they are. Um, on, the, on the right, though, the long-term costs, we have 200000 for repairing the dam over the 30 years. Um, 30000 for the decommissioning um, as, a, as a comparison. Those dollars, by the way, are in today's dollars as if a deposit were made in the bank. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, these are three of the drawings um, <laughs> that uh, we have up here, and I, I don't really want to dwell too much on them, but Basically, they're cross sections of the dr of the dam. This right here is the existing stone wall. Um, this gray line is the existing um, crest of the embankment. This is the upstream side where the water level is, and then this would be the downstream side. Um, these three are all the concept where we would widen the crest. Um, the The goal here would be to 
Um, number one, uh, improve the dam stability so that we're not relying on this stone masonry wall anymore. Um, the dam would be stable if that wall collapsed. Um, the second goal would be to reduce seepage that's coming through the dam. Um, and that seepage reduction uh, is what really differentiates these three particular concepts. One, one seepage resistance would be this cutoff trench where we would excavate and, uh, a trench and then backfill it with a, um, a low permeability material. Um, compared to the two other alternatives where here where we would uh, excavate the embankment and replace it with an engineered material. And the third one would be uh, what we call an upstream blanket where we place that low permeability material on the upstream side. Um, collectively they just are all three are going to reduce the seepage. Um, again you can see the costs range from 450000 to 540 and 470 um, for those three options. Um, the next repair alternative would be a downstream buttress. Here um, we would construct essentially a, a soil berm on the downstream side um, and that would uh, provide the stability and we would engineer in uh, measures to, uh, to mitigate the seepage or to control the seepage rather. Um, the, this would uh, abandon the stone wall. It would either be buried or would be uh, removed. Um, because of the location of the residence there at 490 High Street, that, that residence for this option um, would need to be removed. Um, and that removal cost is reflected in this cost here of 860000 yeah. um, Concrete wall uh, option. Um, the goal here is, is um, uh, again, to improve the stability and reduce the seepage. Um, this option would allow uh, all the all the um, work or the extent of the dam to remain same as the existing extent, whereas the, the downstream buttress option would extend the dam downstream and the widened crest option would extend it uh, upstream slightly. All of the options for repair will require replacing the spillway. Um, the spillway has uh, no erosion protection for the earth embankments as it is currently configured. Um, and it has little control over the pond elevation. Um, this here is a, a plan view. So looking down on the dam, here's the grist mill. Um, up here is the, the pond or the impoundment. Water would flow uh, essentially downward. Um, and what we're showing here is a, a labyrinth spillway. It's a, a state-of-the-art um, spillway design. There's, there's only a few in New England. We're currently designing one in Massachusetts. Um, and what it is, this is the water control structure, is this uh, longer triangular shape um, which will allow higher discharge um, to get, th getting it through that mill opening and um, allowing a, a higher normal pool elevation. And we'll get to that a little more under the hydraulics section. Hmm. Um, these costs for the repair and replacement of the spillway are included in all the previous costs for each of the repair alternatives that, um, that we've already shown you here. Um, these would be concrete uh, training walls, wing walls, and the embankment would come in um, flush with the top of the wall, whereas now there's the um, sloping sides down to the, down to the channel. On the decommissioning concepts, the first is the breach through the spillway in the mill. Um, again, mill's down here. Uh, the pond is up at the top of the drawing. Um, we would excavate a channel through um, the drained impoundment um, through upstream of the mill to bring that elevation down to the invert elevation of the mill. Um, we have some stone um, masonry um, abutments to that opening that would uh, protect that from erosion. Um, and the, the embankments would remain pretty much as they are. The, the stone wall would remain uh, as it is. Um, and the mill would remain substantially as it is, um, with the exception of that upstream area where the, the dam is now. That part would be excavated. Um, again, the cost, 300000 for the, the short term. Um, <clears throat> the last alternative for, for decommissioning is this bypass channel. Um, this would, would come through the left end of the dam. Um, here's the house at 490 High Street. Um, we would need a, a channel. The house would be uh, demolished. We'd need a channel to come down around through the property here and over to the culvert. Um, the, 
the goal here would be to avoid um, the, the mill and the area around the mill as much as possible. It's something that the historical folks were um, were uh, <coughs> advocating to, to try and be away from that area. Um, what, where is the street on that map? That's High Street is down down below here? No, the one that's in front of 490 High Street. There's a street that goes right along there. Yeah, um, right, right here, Mill Pond Lane. Yeah. Is that right there on the diagram? Okay, yep. thank you. Um, yep, and this is the approximate uh, mm -hmm. property boundary. <clears throat> Um, the, the hydraulics and the hydrology. Um, at our public meeting, we had, we had initially said that the dam provides um, little or no flood protection based on our initial analysis. We've since then completed our hydraulic analysis, and uh, we found the following. Um, in its existing configuration, um, that is, um, without a beaver dam, and there used to be some, a ring of stones upstream of the spillway that, um, that have been removed within the last uh, year or so. Um, in its existing configuration, it can provide about one foot of freeboard um, in the 100-year flood with no flow through the auxiliary outlet, which is the outlet um, near the residence. Um, the one foot of freeboard uh, means that the elevation of the 100-year flood is about one foot below the top of the dam, and that meets the requirements for uh, NHDES for um, dams. The, the downside of this is there's virtually no pond in, uh, in this configuration. And it's really the beaver dam that's there now that's creating the pond. In the previous configuration, which is when the ring of stones was present, and it's similar to the current beaver dam, if the 100-year flood comes, the elevation of that flood is only 0.3 feet below the top of the dam. Um, and some of the flow, about half a foot of flow, is going over that auxiliary outlet, which flows right to where the house is. Um, this does not meet the requirements of, uh, for dams for, for the Dam Bureau. Um, the labyrinth weir that we, we showed earlier, um, it would optimize the pool height, meaning the, the normal pool height, um, while safely passing the, uh, the estimated design flood, which is the 100-year the flood. Um, looking a little farther downstream, the 100-year flood inundates High Street. It would exceed the capacity of the culvert, and it would um, uh, flood High Street by about 0.3 feet uh, of water. Um, the dam does currently reduce flows at High Street by about 30 percent. Those are peak flows, um, which are, are actually fairly short duration. Um, it would be only for a few hours. Um, and it marginally reduces the depth of flooding on High Street uh, by, by, by 0.2 feet compared to if the dam was removed. So if the dam was removed, um, High Street in its current configuration would still flood it would just be um, slightly shallower. Mm. Excuse me, it would be slightly higher if the dam were removed. Right, sorry. Yep. Point 0.3 versus point 0.2. Point 0.3 yeah. versus point 0.5. Yep. Um, the other factors that we had considered, the, the deed that gives the town ownership of the dam um, says that the town uh, owns the dam and the water rights, mm. but it does not prescribe a boundary for the mm. dam. Uh, meaning it doesn't say the dam is um, so many feet wide or, or so many feet uh, long. Um, easements are, are going to be needed for the construction of either decommissioning or repair, whether that's temporary easements just for construction and the dam uh, footprint remains the same or whether the dam footprint um, changes as a result of the construction. Uh, one question that's come up um, through the process is, uh, is whether the hazard classification could be reduced. It's currently significant hazard. Um, it was questions of whether it could be reduced to low hazard. Uh, the answer is that it's possible if the residence at 490 High Street was purchased and demolished. Um, however, if, if that occurred and the hazard class was reduced, the, most of the repairs, the vast majority of them would still be needed which would still incur most of the costs that we've estimated here. Um, and as you can see there, the cost to purchase and raise that structure is substantial. It's estimated around $400,000. Um, the dam can also be repaired or decommissioned without, um, without purchasing and, and demolishing that structure. Um, the high street culvert replacement is not required to repair or decommission the dam. Um, it may be considered, 
um, if you if the goal is to reduce flooding on High Street or if uh, improving fish, fish passage is a goal, um, we would estimate the cost to be on the order of three hundred thousand dollars to replace the culvert. <coughs> Both decommissioning and repair concepts will reduce risks to the mill. Um, design of each of each alternative um, will increase the or, or decrease the elevation upstream of the mill, and um, we would not expect the the hundred year flood to to exceed the the um, capacity of the mill opening as uh, as it does now. I'm looking into outside funding. It's likely available for decommissioning. Um, but not likely available for repair. Uh, sources and amounts and competition for that outside funding vary um, from year to year. Um, Old Mill Pond Dam would likely compete favorably for that funding, uh, although that funding is, is quite competitive um, because, uh, because it's ahead of the tide uh, dam uh, near the ocean. Um, Fish and Game also just completed a study um, we saw some initial results today that um, we're finding some warmer water temperatures um, just downstream of the dam, and uh, I, I don't think they found uh, fish in uh, Old Mill Pond. Um, actually, that was um, on this one. <clears throat> um, historic research, uh, resources. Uh, that The mill is a historic structure. Um, the, the resources, they affect the project. Um, because of that, but they do not favor a, a particular option. Mm -hmm. um, NHDHR uh, Division of Historic Research Resources is requesting additional studies regardless of which option is, uh, is pursued. Um, the Natural Heritage Bureau uh, data for rare species, rare and exemplary natu natural communities, they did not identify any of those species uh, upstream or at the dam. Um, they identified one bird and one plant downstream in mm -hmm. Meadow Pond. Uh, and like I, I had mentioned there, uh, Fish and Game had just completed a, a, a study um, as well. From preliminary review, uh, sediment contamination is unlikely. Um, that's look from looking at potential sediment uh, contamination sources that may be uh, located upstream that may generate uh, contamination. Um, we had submitted an um, initial review to NHDES and um, are still awaiting comment. Um, we're told that they will request some additional information um, on that. Uh, in summary, the alternatives with the least short-term cash outlay, um, the cell dam, transfer ownership, decommission through the spillway, and repair uh, by widening the crest with the cutoff trench. Um, and our recommendations are that if the town's goal is to reduce costs and risks, risks that selling the dam or decommissioning by breaching it at the spillway, um, if their goal is to maintain the impoundment, then uh, then repair it by widening the crest uh, upstream and installing the cutoff cutoff trench. Thank you. Okay, um, I'll bring it to the board. Um, are there are questions, comments. I wrote down a whole bunch of them as well along, but my first question, thank you, Mr. Chairman, is <clears throat> if we decided to sell it and if we don't know where the boundaries are, and that's very not very good grammar, if we don't know where the boundaries are located, um, how can we sell it? We would have a surveyor go in there and create a plot plan and to sell for a bill of sale. So what if we'd have to work around the abutting property owner's property and base the survey off of the abutting property owners? Well, because some of those properties have changed hands in the last mm -hmm. few years, decades, we should be able to see something in that arena, right? Figure out where their their property is. That's not a big problem yeah. for us to do that. A surveyor okay. and real estate attorney would work that out. Now the question is, <clears throat> if we. If the town decided to sell it to an interested party, which might be the abutters around the pond, um, what control, if we sold the dam to the abutters, let's say we did that just for a conversation, what controls would the town have to be concerned about in relation to safety of the dam once we've sold it? Is the town off the hook completely, liability-wise? Well, they would be on board with the DES. The Dam Bureau would still, they'd still be the same expectations for mm -hmm. safety 
as they are now. I don't see that changing just because of the ownership changing. The state oversees that. So the town, I guess what my question is, if the town owns it, mm -hmm. we would have some kind of liability, probably, exposure. Yes. And if we sell it, would our liability exposure go to zero if somebody else owns it, private, pro privately owned? That's a good question for uh, an attorney, I believe, but um, uh, I, I would think it, it does, um, but I, I'm not an attorney, so I couldn't say for but sure. But from what you know, you think it would probably approach zero or be about that. Okay. <clears throat> um, what if we do nothing with the, the dam bureau and they say we have to do this? What if the town chooses to do nothing? Then we what happens? We would get fined. <laughs> fined? How we much? We would get fined. Sitting there. <laughs> I mean, how much would we get fined? Chuck, would you mind it? A lot. Into that, Chuck Corliss, from the DM Bureau? Good evening, everybody. My name is Chuck Corliss. I'm a DM safety engineer with the Department of Environmental Services. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that's not the, the road we want to go down. We want to work with the town <laughs> to either repair or remove the dam. Right. Um, DES in the long term would eventually at some point I'd try to work with the town to yeah. uh, remove the portion of the dam so the dam would not impound any water at all. Yeah. Right. But as the, for safety. But in relation to the question though, if we choose to do nothing, period, mm -hmm. and then the DES could find us so much per day or something? It would come to that point at some mm -hmm. at some time. From, okay. So we'd probably, it might be kind of expensive mm -hmm. is what we're saying. Exactly. Okay. They'll arrest you. Uh, I, that's good. <laughs> Give me something to do. Okay, back, back to this outside funding. If we decide to decommission it, you think our chances of getting outside funding are much better from what you right. indicated there, okay. Better than what? Then better than trying to redo, get money to help us repair it. The, the money to help repair it mm -hmm. would, uh, would be a, lo a long shot, probably non-existent. Right. And there is a chance that you could get money uh, for decommissioning. Well, the reason why I asked that question, because I remember reading a while back that the state of New Hampshire was encouraging some of these old dams to be basically eliminated for the environment and for a whole bunch of reasons across the country, not just New Hampshire. And it might be in the town's best interest, disregarding everything else that we'll probably talk about here, to actually just remove it for the environment, if nothing else. That's a possibility. We don't have an opinion on that. Whatever the town decides to do is fine with us. Okay. And, and I have a couple more <laughs> questions about this. If the control in the spillway, from what I understand, a few years back, there used to be some old planks or something they put in there to help raise the level of the water or let it go down. And they have probably been absent for probably a long time. So there's no chance from what you've indicated that we're going to be able to repair anything in that spillway. It's probably all too gone. Um, we, we didn't, when we have inspected the dam, we saw no remains of fault. <laughs> and um, the, the, probably the bigger concern right now is that there's no walls abutting the ends of the embankments, which means when the flood comes through there, it can easily erode the soil that's yeah. forming the dam, um, which is, is uh, can create a, a bigger uh, problem. I see. I, have, I think that pretty well covers all my questions. I'll give somebody else a shot. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, gentlemen. Great brief. Read the reports. Very detailed, very informative. Like your courses of action and how they're all outlaid. I'm keenly interested in listening to the abutters. The, there seems to be uh, quite a few of them here, and I'm, I'm interested in, in what those people that own real property that abut that property and are in that neighborhood. Thank you. Okay. Mike? Um, would you assume that the reason this dam was put in was to hold the water back at a certain time of the year? For the grist mill and for the purposes of ice, cutting ice. Um, I think so. I mean, it's. I think it's pretty clear it was for purposes of the mill. Right. Hmm. We we have a sort of a a, a, a a saying. It's it's more of a joke, really, and that is no. You know, very few people want a dam. Most people want a pond. Right. And with no no dam, no pond. Right. So. Um, they wanted the water. The water right. rights are what really were deeded here. Mm -hmm. right. They wanted to use the water for milling. Mm -hmm. right. And and the, the and dam they, was necessary for that. And they cut ice up there. Mm -hmm. But there was also a restriction on it. Mm -hmm. That you couldn't flood the land 
downstream or upstream. This this one says for hay fields. Mm -hmm. So they didn't want it flooded in the summer. Yeah. That was never intended to be flooded year round. Yeah. That was that was done. Man did that to have a water supply to grind corn in the mill in the fall, this time of year, mm -hmm. after harvest. And the, there was another gentleman had involved in that down there that cut ice there and hauled it to the Hampton Beach Casino for a number of years. Mm -hmm. It's also related to the ice pond on Woodland Road. And those, both of those properties had regulations and stipulations in them when they were owned by the private people that you couldn't flood downstream and you were responsible for the damages. Yeah. I would assume that when they built that grist mill and it had been replaced once or twice because it burned, that the natural flow went down through there. And they put it there because the water was there. Yeah. But the water was no threat to anybody because it wasn't dammed up. It was natural drainage yeah. out through Meadow Pond to the tidal marsh and out to the ocean. So man came along and got permission to plug it all up <laughs> for purposes of ice and grain for the grist mill. The grist mill has ceased operation. And the refrigerators came along and the ice business went <laughs> down the drain. So to build this dam and spend all this money and keep the regulations that control it at that great expense doesn't somehow make sense to me anymore mm. because the two reasons that it was put there yeah. have gone away. I can see keeping the mill and I could, I could see doing a spillway under the mill so that it looked like that's what it was when it was in operation. Mm. But I have great concern with flooding property up back and these hundred year storm events that we've had mm. that do a lot of destruction. And I would, I would, you know, to take somebody's property for $400,000 to, to drain water, it has no specific purpose. There's no fish in it. There's, it's, it's just a man-made water hole. I think is wrong. I, I, I may be old-fashioned, but I think it ought to just go its natural way, make the make the mill safe so that the water can flow through there without mm -hmm. disrupting it. Obviously, the culvert on High Street has needed attention for a number of years because it can't handle the flow, yeah. and it would it would solve a lot of problems. Just an opinion, I guess, or a question. Okay. Mary Louise? Yeah. How many hoops do we have to jump through to decommission it, and what time frame have you got? Well, we'll be talking about that as the next subject. I had that as a septic, septic, separate Sept subject. That's all I want to know. Get rid of it. <clears throat> what do we do? Well, well, we, there has to be a decision made on part of the town which way <clears throat> they want to go and yeah. direct us to, to work towards that. Right. Um, so what yeah, I've, but I, I... I think, like Keith said, I think that's jumping ahead I think okay. that's something we need to well, cover between some combination of tonight maybe question. next week or whatever any other questions or no nope. okay I have a few do it um, I, I heard everything you said I read the report but in terms of comparing the two decommissioning options um, I could not see the the option of of the seven hundred fifty thousand dollar option with the purchase of the house um, making mm -hmm. sense. I I just didn't er, everything I read, and I'm just wondering if I'm missing something. But that of the two decommissioning options, that did not make sense to me. Um, if if uh, from a financial standpoint, uh, we, we would agree. Okay. What what is the benefit then of of routing it around? The house and removing the house and what I and even the historical your historical comment I couldn't well, rationalize because to me flowing under the mill is a lot more desirable than flowing around. But we submitted a, a review um, request to NHDHR and um, 
asked them to take a look at the project mm -hmm. in, in the request, and they, they looked at the information we sent them, which was quite detailed, and then they asked to, to meet with us, so we met with them at the site mm -hmm. and um, went over the project with them. And um, we conceived of that second decommissioning alternative as a result of that meeting mm -hmm. because it was their feeling that they wanted to see it, um, if there might be another alternative to decommissioning in case archaeology or something <laughs> showed uh, something in the area of the spillway. So it's kind of a plan B for the sake of having a plan B <laughs> as opposed to thinking plan B was better than plan A. Yeah, also part of the, um, the process for the, the historical um, review is to demonstrate that we've considered all the options and <laughs> that there's good reason for choosing one. So this is part of showing that there, there is another alternative, but it's, it's so not pretty. Right. Um, I'll, I'll just comment that I had several questions related to the transfer of ownership, but um, I think your point was well taken. You're, you know, those tend to be more legal questions, and you're not going to respond to those, but I don't intend to bring those up unless somebody comes forward, um, otherwise be a um, waste of time. Um, I interpreted your comment, outside funding, as in competitive grants, is likely available for decommissioning versus your comments about grants available for repair. And you tell me if I'm interpreting correct that there's almost no chance of, of getting any help on the repair right. issue. And and mm -hmm. I'm I'm interpreting likely as maybe there's a 50-50 or higher chance of fully realizing it, it changes from year to year, but you have the perspective of looking back a number of years. Am I interpreting that correctly? or? Well, I think uh, Deb Loisel is here, and she might be able to comment on that uh, better than I, I can. Uh, but it's our opinion, based on talking to Deb and others, that the the project would compete favorably. Um, maybe she can clarify that for us. Thank you, Bob. Hello, Mr. Chairman, Board of Selectmen, members, public. Um, unfortunately, that is the case, um, and that's something that you know is presented to us a lot of times. There's little to no funding. Mm -hmm. um, where we see some minimal funding. Sometimes, although I haven't seen it come to fruition um, as of yet in the nine years I've been with DES, is there are some small historical grants. So if the dam is actually individually deemed as historic, um, there's some small grants. They're about two to five thousand um, dollars. But beyond that, there's there's really no funding for repair mm. for the decommissioning or removal of a dam. There is, there tends to be much more. Oh, okay. um, a lot of that comes from the fisheries, um, Fish and Wildlife Service, New Hampshire Fish and Game, um, just Excellent. the ecological resources, looking to you know remove barriers for mm -hmm. fish passage. Yep. Um, and I know a lot of people feel that that's very very unfair. I won't disagree with that. Um, I guess what I would say is just you know continue to have people. Go to their senators and explain that this is, you know, is a hardship. But to date, there just there hasn't been any viable funding. Um, and as Bob noted, I mean, this is a project that certainly meets a lot of the criteria. You, as a municipality, um, would meet the criteria for a lot of these potential funding sources. The fact that um, you know there with the fisheries and some ecological restoration, um, I can't tell you how well it would rank. Mm -hmm. um, I think Jim and Bob had mentioned that essentially it really depends on what other projects are in the queue yeah. um, at the time, but it certainly is something that, you know, it would, I think, do well. So on the decommissioning end of things, then, it, it's federal money that's administered by DES, then? Um, it depends. Uh, there is one source, uh, EPA 319 grant, which some of you may be familiar with. Um, it's a water quality grant. Um, it's administered by DES, but it is federal funds. Mm -hmm. So that is one. Um, so it would require some match to go with it, some non-federal match. Um, and you can do that through in-kind services such as, you know, state uh, personnel like my time. I'm not federally funded, so my time associated with the project could go towards it. Um, the time that town personnel spend on it, any volunteers assisting. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's other, you know, non- Federal cash matches uh, fishing game, 
would potentially be a source, the Habitat Restoration Funds, and Cherie Patterson is here who could probably talk a little bit more about that, um, and then other some other small viable sources. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, High Street, Route 27, whatever, the, the road associated with the culvert, that's a state road that's part of the urban compact? Yes, that's so correct. So even though it's a state road and that played a role in, in the upgrading of, of the hazard aspect, uh, it's, it's totally on our dime yes. then if we want to do something <laughs> with that um, culvert. Another no surprise. I think we just got downshifted again. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> or still, or whatever. Oh, downshifted, I have another word for it. I can't um, say in public. <laughs> at any rate, um, just a kind of a dumb question, but I, I looked at some of the numbers related to, to you know, 50 and 100 year floods and, you know, the extent to which, you know, you start talking 0.3 or 0.2 or 0.5, you're talking 3 or 4 or 5 inches, in theory, once every 50 or, or 100 years. Um, immediate thought that comes to my mind is, is why do you want to spend $300,000 as opposed to just once every 50 or 100 years deal with, with whatever problems are a result of that? Um, I don't know if you can respond to that. or um, It's really a matter of accessibility uh, for emergency vehicles and other types of uh, equipment. Um, the culvert will also have uh, an effect on uh, dam future dam inspections, the fact that it's downstream of the structure. So um, that may come into play at some time in the future. For instance, regulations change, and that's one of the reasons for the change in classification of the dam. Yeah. Um, if regulations change in the future, say that, that if that road is unpassable, it has to be a high hazard dam. That could affect you. Now, would I, re, you know, would I replace that culvert on a chance that the regulations could change? No, I probably wouldn't. <coughs> but um, it may come into play if um, this um, town decided to decommission because the culvert is perched, which mm -hmm. means that yeah. it's above the meadow pond mm -hmm. um, most of the time or some of the time. Mm -hmm. um, but I think there are ways to address fish passage besides replacing the culvert. Um, you know, we've done a few fish passage projects, and we think we could design something pretty elegant to to take care of that without With, spending without, without spending three hundred thousand necessarily, and perhaps okay. And and am I correct that alternative routes? To High Street, should High Street be breached with a 50 or 100 year flood, would play a role in terms of the decision making process as to whether or not it made sense? Um, I'm sorry, I didn't. Al alternative routes? Yeah. And w would that not play a role? In other words, if High Street is, is, is breached because of a 100 year flood or whatever, if you've got other ways that are convenient of, of mm -hmm. getting back and forth, whether it's emergency vehicles or whatever, it would seem to me that that would play a role. Yes. Okay. Um, Fire chief would be a good person to talk to about okay. that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, am, am I correct that decommissioning the dam, as opposed to repairing it, would place more stress or pressure on that culvert? High, higher flows in a decommissioning. I, th I thought I got that out of. Well, it would have a point two feet more pressure or head as we call it um, during the hundred year flood. So in theory there's a little bit more of, of, of a need to, re to deal with the culvert if it's decommissioned as opposed to if it's repaired? In theory, yep. Okay. Uh, the, flow, the flows are about 30 percent higher mm -hmm. if it's decommissioned. Okay. That's that's the peak the peak the peak flow staging that we were talking about where the the dam reduces the between the flow coming into the pond and the flow going out it's reduced by about thirty percent because of the dam right. so um, if the dam were removed that inflow to the pond would be going straight to the culvert. straight into the culvert there's a a note here that the primary spillway is is three hundred feet hundred yards and I I had trouble picturing the spillway being a hundred yards can you um, wh where's the note? 
I'm sorry, what? Where, where's the note that you... Um, I'm on page 3 of 11, and it says on the, uh, the first decent-sized paragraph down, it says, based on our site observation missions, we, es we estimate the length and height to be about 300 feet, which I presume is the length at 11.2, respectively. Mm. Oh, that, that, I see. That's the. Um, it, it's not clear what that applies to. That, that's the length of the dam itself. Right. The not, dam the spillway. Pavement, not the spillway. Not the spillway. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's fine. Because I mean, there wasn't. Yep. I knew there wasn't 100 yards. But. Good question. Um, you say currently the pond elevation. There's a beaver dam. Um, should we be removing a beaver dam if there is, or? We've, we've been trying to stay ahead of the beaver okay. dam. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> little critters are tricky. <laughs> yeah. Dam builders. you got to be nice um, to the beavers. Just to comment, at the end of the day, <clears throat> whatever approach is removing the house just didn't seem cost effective yeah. um, to me. Well set. Fred, any questions or comments? Or? Uh, just a couple, Mr. Chairman. Uh, when you did the final analysis on um, inflows to the dam, did you look at Springhead Brook? If you look at aerial photo two uh, that's in your report, uh, the inflow coming under North uh, Shore Road um, splits around a boggy area. You can obviously see there's some, uh, some of the water there. But as you follow that down to the left, that's the feed-in for Springhead Brook, which flows down to the Dows River. Mm -hmm. um, if you breach the dam and lower that table, will that dry up? Um. That's a major uh, water course for, uh, for, for drainage for the town. So I'm just, I'm concerned that uh, if flows are no longer allowed to go down through there and it dries up, that we may potentially could have a problem at some point in the, in the future. We have a large rain event and, and it's blocked. Well, it, 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 it likely wouldn't block. It would just become ephemeral instead of... Well, it may, it may silt instead. itself because of the low flows and so on and so forth. Natural vegetation, it's all pretty wild land out there. So my concern would be that you wouldn't have the flow ratios going through there that you need to maintain it and keep the keep the water level managed. Well, clearly um, it should be, that's a good, that's a question that should be asked. So yeah. that would have to be looked at in, in the design of the decommissioning. I think if you look at the town history, uh, part of that area in there was raised in order to shoot more water down towards the dam. Mm -hmm. So they, they'd be able to grind mm. more corn yep. uh, <laughs> when they wanted to. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you might look at that as well. So. Yeah, we, we, we did, we did see some of that, that there was a, um, a in essence, a flow split through there. Yeah. Um, what, what wasn't necessarily clear to us, or it appeared that it was the runoff that was flowing mm -hmm. to that small area of drainage that was then splitting between the pond and the yeah. the alternate to route to Dallas Brook. Yeah. Um, so it, it it wasn't necessarily clear to us at the time anyways whether there was flow coming from Nihilus Brook that then was going down that direction. Or My not. suggestion you look at the town history because I think you'll find that area there was deliberately raised was the impression I got from reading the history uh, in order to flow more towards the dam. Mm -hmm. So that's the only question I have. Mr. Okay. Well, yeah. th those types of questions come come up during design of, right. of the alternative so we, we, would, mm -hmm. um, we would look at that then it's part of the normal yeah. course of it so okay at this point I'd like to open up for a public uh, comment would uh, anybody from the public wish to comment who's going to be first Hi, my name is Bob Lindinger and I'm concerned about the Barclay residents on 44 North Shore Road, and I just had a couple of questions. Uh, I noticed in the report that you mentioned if uh, one of the options on the is a repair, that for all the repair options, the long-term cost is 200K maintenance over 30 years. I'm just wondering what's involved. That's about 7,000 
dollars a year on average. If this is a new dam <coughs> or a repair dam, what kind of expense would there be? You can you give me examples of why you'd be spending seven k a year for thirty years? Because it it makes that option really look bad. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes. It uh, costs include um, vegetation cutting, yeah, clearing, um, general maintenance. For example, if, if portions of the stone masonry are, are falling out and need any kind of routine repair, um, it includes um, routine inspections of the dam um, by, by town personnel. Um, it includes uh, periodic uh, engineering consultation for inspection if needed. Um, it may include some insurance costs. Okay. Would that, how would that compare to this 300-year-old dam? What's being spent a year on that? All those kind of things ought to be done on this dam. No, Is that kind of money being spent now? No. I just think it's a little bogus. No offense, but it just sounds like a lot of money to me. Can I ask a couple other questions sure. while I'm up here? Thank you. It seems to me that as far as if we're flooding is a big concern, mm -hmm. the priority is the culvert. The dam's got enough, hardly anything to do with the uh, flooding. And if you breach the mm -hmm. dam, the culvert's even more critical for flooding of uh, mm -hmm. the escape route, okay. route 27. So, you know, as a lay person, it seems to me if, if you're going to spend town money, what would be a top priority would be fix that culvert before you do anything with the dam. And then the last thing I wanted to ask you was uh, um, the other thing with the dam, I mean, with, sorry, with the culvert, is you already mentioned it's perched. So the idea of fish migration, you know, all these people want to restore rivers and let the fish go up. Fish aren't going to go up unless you fix that mm -hmm. perch. Yeah, that's not so. Um, the culvert's uh, perched sometimes okay um, but there are plenty of fish that can leap that high okay and there are fish that will get up and down the culvert which is not ideal yeah. for their migration okay all right thank you very much appreciate okay. it somebody else from the public sir <coughs> good evening all uh, my name is kevin grondon i'm uh Actually, one of the residents right next to that almost turn around the left side, as they called it, on that one particular option. I live on Mill Pond Lane. And I would like to start by saying uh, we're missing some commonsensical issues here, folks. Sorry. Uh, in fact, every morning, including this morning, I see fish jumping in the pond. So I'm sorry, whoever didn't see fish in the pond isn't seeing what we see in the pond. Yeah. This group of people is not here because they don't want to see a pond, as you all by now yeah. know. Uh, we didn't move to Hampton to live on a whatever, call it a bug fest, because that's what the town of Hampton created when they removed the double rock walls that were there by some kind of ingenious farmer back in 1700s. Yeah. There was a double dropping down spill wall that slowed things down. We also brought up the last time we met here that technically the culvert going under High Street, the main problem there was caused by aeration of the water because the spillway itself has been allowed to deteriorate. Mm -hmm. It's a nuisance to clean up and smooth out, I understand. Mm -hmm. But the aeration going towards that culvert is what caused more of the flooding than anything else. And this dam has been there since the 1700s, we'll just say, for whatever reasons of which I don't disagree that it was probably for the cornfields that went from Mill Pond all the way around to North Shore and up to Woodland. However, the reason I bring up the commonsensical side of this, and I know that these are all costly endeavors no matter how we look at this, but this is a last ditch chance for the, salt, the 
solutions that all of us use in a, on a daily basis to be somewhat filtered out before they go to our fine eel pond across the road. This is the last fresh water coming that way for quite a large portion of town and I understand that some of the hydrology and siltration and, and the chemical analysis from the uh, soils uh, of which I never saw them out in the pond taking any tests or samples so I don't understand how they would have those facts and figures but the difference between water that's been allowed to calm and drain off some of its foul things that we all put use for fertilizers and bug sprays and this and that how could making that or retaining it as a pond not help our eel pond and then also the entire marsh so there's some commonsensical angles here to the last of the we'll call it mohegans but in this case the last pond. Mm -hmm. Thank you and sorry to take up too much of your time. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Somebody else from the public? Candace? Uh, I have a few uh, questions before. They're going to put up a map on the uh, TV. Has anybody come up with the figure on how big the area is that drains into this pond? that come up in any of the studies? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's just shy of the square mile, about 0.9 square mile. We couldn't hear that. It's just shy of a square mile, about 0.9 square miles. Oh. That conflicts with some of the reports that we have from DES going back to 1935. Their reports vary, but that's one of the, the lowest estimates that we've heard. We, yep. The, um, initial conversations we had years ago was to use this pond and meadow pond to uh, hold stormwater runoff. Has that got any value still? Did it have value then? Are, are we still going to have that discussion regardless of what we do with the dam? Well, the, the, um, as we, we tried to say in the presentation, the difference between the dam in a hundred years flood the difference between the dam being there and the dam not being there is about 0.2 feet in height of water going over high speed. Well, the pond used to be 12 feet deep. Right now, it's about a foot deep if you're lucky. <coughs> so it's full of sediment. Oh, yeah. So that makes the difference. Yeah. But that doesn't stop the amount of water coming in there, draining off the land around it. So it's got to go somewhere. That's right. Um, on the master plan and the mitigation hazard plans, every one of them measures or mentions fixing the culvert that's on a priority list yeah. close to high and oh, yeah. so if, if that could be done with some kind of federal or state funding that would take that cost out of this whole discussion yes the what uh, that came up from a, a previous person that spoke up about it and I wanted to address that at the time but I, I, I for, slipped my mind by the time they were done but <clears throat> the town is under a mandate from the state by letter of deficiency mm -hmm. based on an inspection done by the yeah. <coughs> dam bureau and that letter of deficiency is the next thing short of an administrative order from the state which the town will receive if it does not address this so there's no the the, the I think you raise a good point but the town uh, has to address this or they're going to get an administrative order followed by fines mm -hmm. uh, and there's no there's no, no such um, regulatory body um, mm -hmm. pressing them to repair high street that, so that's the difference yes. on that map I hate I'm sorry the TV's behind you folks in those circles that we drew those are dr huge drainage areas the one up the top is water coming down Nihilus, and it's going to cross under North Shore Road. Mm -hmm. That water coming into that area also on a map that you provided on page 119 of your report, there's a big sub drainage pond up there that, from all reports I've had, it was created by the town running off from 
that street up off of Woodland. It's got a, sil a siltration fence in the middle of it. Beavers go out there occasionally. That, that pond in your picture is 20 times larger than our pond, mill pond. So I don't know if that's holding more water, if the water's sitting still collecting bugs or what, but we've never addressed all of that water that's building up upstream. The, um, it, towards the center of the picture, there's a very small circle. That's where Springhead Aquifer is, mm -hmm. which the water company now has their well into. Yeah. The dam was put there in 1709 to force the water back sort of northeast, more north than anything, to go into Mill Pond so that they could fill up the pond. And they did grind corn year round. It wasn't just in the fall because people had to eat flour, all have flour year round. And part of it trickles down and goes down into the lower left hand area, which is the Dow River mm -hmm. that feeds fresh water into Meadow Pond. And if you go down there on a boat once a year, you might be able to make it. And that's also feeding the, the deer and all the wildlife with some fresh water before it gets into salt, what is now brackish water in Meadow Pond. Mm. All this water's got to go somewhere, whether there's a dam there or not. And we'd kind of like that addressed totally besides this whole mill project. The water's going to come, and we're just hoping it doesn't do any damage. Mm. Thank you. Right. Somebody else from the public. Arthur, I think. Arthur, did you want to say something? R. Moody, I haven't seen Mr. Grondon for a long time. Uh, Hundred-year storm, uh, you know, High Street's been closed off there. But I haven't been around a hundred years. It's been closed off at least a half a dozen times. Oh, yeah. Uh, I remember that Hurricane Bob in October, 11 inches of rain in... Mm -hmm. uh, three days, mm -hmm. which has nothing to do with Nihilus Brook or, <laughs> or the pond or the dam. <laughs> so flooding on High Street, how do you how do you get rid of it? If this contributes to High Street flooding, I should think that would be the, the main movement towards what you do in this project, which is going to be a project. Uh, now the strip of duplexes along High Street toward the beach, mostly duplexes, we could have bought the whole land in the 1980s for $5,000. And now all you get is complaints when it does flood. Mm -hmm. and, and even though there's barricades and a, maybe a fire engine stationed there, you do get vehicles going through there and create waves. In the 90s, we get complaint ground level garage doors and those duplexes gets damaged by the waves, the vehicles. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm going to try and de de decipher these, uh, this alphabet. I don't, maybe I missed it. DHR, is that Department of Historical Resources? Yes, yes. Is that a standalone department? Or do you, is some super department over you? As far as I know, it's a is, is it some director department? named Van something? V A N something? I no? know. So you're a standalone department? Hmm? No. I'm, we're not with the Arthur. Pardon? This is, these are the engineering consultants which we hired. Oh. <laughs> is, is DHR here? No. 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 Oh, okay. Is it? Okay. Uh, DES. Is that just one department? I mean, that's Department of Environmental Services? Yes. The and, that, and what department, what under, what division is here? No, no, no. Private there's engineers, Arthur. Private engineering. Well, firm. there's all kinds of divisions. In no, there, no, there, there no. are some there are people in the audience. There are three representatives here from NHBES, and they're all in different departments. Yeah. Okay. So actually, that's oh. not true. Um, I think, Deb, you're part of the dams bureau, right? Yep. Oh, so Deb Lucelle is the river restoration coordinator from NHDES. Chuck Corliss is the, the dam safety engineer. 
And Kevin Lucy is in another department. The name of it is escaping me right now, but it's coastal. Coastal. <laughs> yep, coastal program. Now, now you mentioned rivers. Uh, isn't it just in the last few years the legislature gave the state ownership of rep riparian rights? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Because maybe Nihilus Brook is owned by the state. It's my that. understanding that it's not just by river, but, but it's more by volume, size of a, oh. of a pond. It's my understanding. I'm not understanding. Great ponds. I know that Water Bottling Company in Nottingham generated this interest uh, in the state getting to own things. Uh, well, uh, I, I, I heard the gentleman talk about the Barclay property on North Shore Road. He, uh, it was after Bill Barclay was on the Conservation Commission for a long time that the Conservation Commission in the 90s bought some property with an accumulation fund a lot on the Northampton line, Nihilus Brook, and uh, then voted to tell town, part-time town council to deed half of it in Northampton to Northampton. I don't know if that ever happened, but mm. that's what they want to do. But that was that, that should have been kept by the town of Hampton as protection, mm. Nihilus Brook, to tell you the truth. And uh, those are just some observations I've had on this, uh, but the bank that built this building was the one that had a foreclosure on that land along High Street that's duplexes. Yeah. And they uh, they sold an empty strip after we put northeast on, uh, intercept the sewer into all the little dots, lots, and yeah. built a sidewalk with undulating <laughs> curb cuts. But uh, now we just have a, a major problem on High Street. It's, I've got pictures going back when the Coast Guard station was still there. Just flooded. Thank you. Thank you, Arthur. Somebody else from the public. Norm Hurley from 472 High Street. First question is uh, a couple questions and a couple comments, if you don't mind. Does this, does your study address or does it uh, satisfy, I believe it's the Federal Requirements 106 on studying historical dams? Um, no, we didn't, it does not complete that process. This is an initial study. And so the, the task here was to um, identify the project with the Division of Historic Resources and seek their input. So. Next question is for DES, and that is, um, I assume, and I'm not, I, that what I'm hearing is the main reason why this uh, dam was upgraded to a high hazard was basically because of the one house that was put in the spillway. Is that correct? It's actually uh, classified as a significant hazard, and it is due to the house on the left hand side. So it's strictly to the, because of the one house that was built, I believe, in 1978, if I remember, from, from what I heard. Um, so and really has nothing to do with the culprits underneath. However, culprits underneath is just another issue which really doesn't really compete with the dam part problem or the house that's in, in the spillway. It's, 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 excuse me, it's also an issue with the house is the main reason. We, we can't hear you can't back hear, there. You yeah, I just sure? asked the uh, Channel 22 people and it, it's not coming through too well from the back, so come to the mic. Thank you. Uh, your, your first question is the uh, dam is a significant hazard due to the house on the left hand side. Mm -hmm. in, in, in the hazard of the culvert has little to do with raising the increased uh, hazard of the dam? The culvert does uh, contribute to the hazard of the dam, but it, if it wasn't for the house, it would be a low hazard dam and actually drop the uh, design storm down to a 50 year storm rather than a 100 year storm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Back to the flooding of, of High Street, and I think um, Arthur actually did hit on it a little bit. Yeah. High Street is flooded significantly many times a year. I mm -hmm. run the road. Yeah. Sorry about the running, but uh, <laughs> 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 I run the road quite often, and um, 
quite honestly, it's very impassable on a number of occasions. Mm -hmm. Never mind the 100 year flood or the 50 year flood, because the uh, fire trucks in itself mm -hmm. would not be advised to pass at that point yeah. because of the softness yeah. of the road. So, regardless of whether the fire department or, or the dam is repaired, it has little to do with the crossing of High Street. Mm -hmm. uh, the significant issue here really is, comes down to is the one house that's in the spillway or mm -hmm. that was erected in the spillway in 78. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I don't think has been cleared up is that this, to the residents in this area, this is considered a historic dam. I, I, I understand you know, with, with the grist mill and all that, um, you know, it's considered one of the oldest grist mills or one of the oldest grist mill locations in the state of New Hampshire, mm -hmm. or maybe even the country. Yeah. So it does have a, a, a significance to the residents, both of Hampton and of the area. So we are quite concerned, and I will say that to the mm -hmm. selectmen as well, we would love to see some sort of repair. I understand okay. the difference in cost in our view right now of looking up on $170,000 more in the decommission of the, of the dam. Mm -hmm. But to us, uh, and I know there will be significant <coughs> costs down, downstream, however, some of the significant costs really will remain even with the decommission. There are certain things that are... are you know, you have to still take care of the, the sides that after the 100 year dams or the 50 year floods or whatever. I mean, the 50 year floods or the 100 year floods, you still have to repair all that stuff. And you still have to take care of the, the spillways and all that still. I, I don't see the $200,000 um, or, you know, versus $30,000 over 20 years doesn't seem to commute to me. Uh, compute to me. Can I just uh, say something? Sure. To, to be clear, this may not matter t to you, but to be clear, the dam will remain. If we decommission the spillway, we would decommission the dam through the spillway. The only thing that would change is the pond. The pond would no longer mm -hmm. function as the pond, so the dam would still be there. Mm -hmm. That was the that was the intent, yeah. so that it would it would keep. Well, I, I, and from I the road, that, it would look exactly the same. Probably. Well, from the road, it it may. From from the residents, it won't. Okay. Well, yeah, I understand. Yeah. That. I just and wanted I, to and make I understand sure what you. Right, so I understand. The next question I had was um, I, I heard about uh, very little funding and grants, but that's are you talking strictly um, state and federal grants? Have we has anybody looked into private grants or like the National Conservatory uh, groups and stuff like that, um, where they may have private grants or private historic grants? Yeah. Has anybody looked into that? Are we are we strictly talking federal and state? That's okay. So when I was talking about um, grants that are available, I was talking about you know nonprofit, private, federal, state. All, so all the ones that you know. That is correct. Um, and as far yeah. as historic, I mean, I'd highly encourage you to contact the Division of Historic Resources. They do have a grants manager. Thank you. We have asked that question on other dams, and uh, the answer is generally there's very little available. Mm. Yeah. Just a question I needed to have answered. Yep. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, again, you know, and again, to the selectmen, if nothing else, I think at least the group here tonight um, would love to see not just the dam remain, but but the water remain mm -hmm. as well. And yeah. that's kind of where we're at. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody else from the public? <coughs> Hi, uh, Steve Piotti, 64 North Shore Road. I'm mm -hmm. actually behind the pond, uh, what used to be a pond. Just uh, two questions. In your study, did you at all consider using a hydroelectric, adding a hydroelectric generator in the dam itself to compensate for, you know, funds spent? Um, I, I, we thought about it. Um, the, the dam doesn't have either high enough flows or a high enough drop for for hydroelectric to be um, be viable in in uh, our experience. All right. So there's enough flow to run a mill, but not enough to run a small generator. Well, well, for it to be to be economically viable mm -hmm. on a on a scale to be able to pay back the investment. Okay. Thank you. Hey, somebody else from the public. Okay, seeing none, I'll bring it back to the board, and I think where I'll go from here is, is 
the decision making process going forward and, and, and how we want to handle that. I'll, I'll make one comment and then ask for Keith to comment. Keith has indicated that he would like some direction from the board on this by um, October 28th mm -hmm. or whatever. So yeah. maybe if you could, um, did you have something? Yes, I have a really quick comment in line with what Arthur said and the, and the gentleman said as well. Since DES is here, and this has stuck in my craw for years, whoever allowed, whoever from the state of New Hampshire allowed the buildings to be built in the marsh at the end of High Street, that's what's giving you flooding down there and closing the roads. So whoever, and I'm sure it's before Mr. Corliss's time, but whoever allowed all those buildings to be built in the marsh east of the grist mill, folks, that's what's making a mess. Okay. At any rate, um, Keith, you had indicated you would, would, would like to have some direction from the board. I, I believe primarily in the area of, of selecting an option um, or whatever from those presented by the 28th. And maybe if you could comment on that, we can figure kind of the, from a process standpoint, where we go from here. Actually, I'm looking for some direction uh, tonight uh, mm -hmm. because I have a mandate that I have to get back to the state by, I believe it's November 4th. Um, but we're not looking for a decision on which way to go at this point. What I'm recommending is that <clears throat> the existing LOD uh, letter of deficiency uh, cause, uh, requires the town to actually start reconstruct or have reconstruction or decommissioning of the dam by uh, November 1st of 2014. Mm, good. Uh, there's just no way that, even if you gave us the authority to do either of those, it's just not feasible at this point to go through the process. We'd have to have a warrant article. Mm. There's a lot of work that's associated with, with doing that work, do preliminary work. <laughs> so what I'd like to do is get a consensus from the board to put a, to, from, to authorize me to petition the state to delay those um, deadlines by two years so that the first deadline would be that we would or the first idea is that in 2015 we would have a warrant article to do an option that would be decided at that time because this board some of you may or may not be on the board at that time and that's the earliest that I could see that we could be prepared for a warrant article is 2015 so we'd have to have um, time to, you know, for the, for the board at the time decide how to proceed with that decision making process uh -huh. of which way to go. Follow what I'm saying? No, I, no, the, I don't the, understand. The current LOD, the current state of it without some change from DES requires the dam to be decommissioned or repaired by November 1st of 14? Correct. Mm. Okay. So what you're looking That's for you is one year. Um, request to DES to defer that to November 1st of 2015? Right, but so that what I'm saying is that we would have the design done. The idea is we would seek a warrant article in 2015 to do the whole project. We would ask for a delay in the permitting in the final design review process of November 1st of 2015 okay. and have construction done by two, November 1st of 2016 taking into account that all the other requirements of the LOD we would comply with, such as developing an emergency action plan and continuing to maintain the, the dam as it is, you know, the requirements of maintenance of the dam. Well, pr presuming there's no major safety issue associated with that, I mean, it would seem to me that the board would find that acceptable, and the question is whether or not DES would find it acceptable. What, what is Why? the feeling of the board? Why? Why can't we give authorization? We have time to draft an article for 2014 instead of stalling and just get authorization from the public. I think you need to direct to do, that question to Keith. To here. do whatever you need to do and with the understanding that it's going to take a little time to actually accomplish it. I think if this board was prepared, and I haven't thought this through, but yeah. if this board tonight could make a decision on which option to yeah. go, then I think yeah. I'd refer to the town manager whether or not there's enough time to put together the warrant article. I'm assuming, I guess there probably is, but that's assuming that Let's this board it. is ready to make that decision tonight, and I didn't think you would be well, prepared to do that. I, you know, or even on the 28th. You, uh, yeah, I was going to say, I have a hard even time on the differentiating between making a decision tonight versus a week from now, and I think one thing that, that, that Keith didn't mention 
in terms of the time frames is all the other things that he's got on his plate may be playing a role in wanting to defer that. This is not the only reason you come to work. You've got right. other things that, that right. you, so that may be playing a we role a in terms of, of, yes. of him looking for the deferral. What, what is the downside of seeking that deferral from DES? It certainly gives us, you know, to me, if you've got more time, there, there, you, you've got a better chance of, 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 of getting it right in an effective and efficient um, manner. What is the downside of, of, of seeking the deferral that you're asking for? Is there one? From, my stand, from the town standpoint, I don't see any downside um, as far as that goes. Um, I just think that there's a lot of more issues that have to be addressed in fairness to the, the abutters and the stakeholders you know, we want to be able to amply <coughs> respond to all their concerns because it's going to be a Warren article one way or the other, mm -hmm. I would assume. I'd rather kind of hash those issues out before town meeting than on the floor of town meeting. So in order to be totally prepared, I think we need that extra time. That's assuming there's no guarantee that the state's going to give us that extra time. That's why I'm saying that we would petition them. If, if, if we were to, it, it sounds like we're probably going to need a motion because it's not clear that we have a, you know, unanimous consensus here on the deferral issue. But it would seem to me if, if, if we're going to do that, you would have to um, get a response from DES fairly quickly um, such that if the response from them was negative, we would have to um, go forward with a, with a 2014 Warren article, correct? So I assume if you're asking for that and know it and what I said is correct, then you would anticipate that DES would get back to you fairly quickly one way or the other? I've already discussed with DES the option of having an extension beyond 2014. Mm -hmm. What I have not discussed with them is by doing that by a two-year period. Okay. I was talking I would, initially by one year. Okay, let's, let's try and get through that one right now. Um, I would make a motion that we authorize Keith to request um, the extension, um, essentially, I think what you said was was engineering complete by 2015 and and, and replacement or um, eliminating it by 2016. Correct. Complete construction. Okay, can I get a second for that? Get a second from me, boss. Okay, second from me. Uh, Any further discussion yes. on that? How I don't see why a vote in March of 2014 to actually go ahead with whichever, I think we all have a pretty good idea in our minds what we want to do for an option. I don't see how that can, can do any harm to the uh, engineering procedure and so forth that has to be gone through. Obviously he has to do design work and talk to the neighborhood and so forth, but why can't we give permission to start the process to go ahead and either decommission or reconstruct and get it over with. Well, you may not, but I heard from yeah. Pete that he does. Well, he doesn't have as to. As far as my workload goes, I'll work around that. I don't want you to make a decision based on my workload. <laughs> I appreciate the concern. My, but what I'm saying is that if this is the decision of the board, naturally, which way you want to go. I've yeah. just laid out some options on which way. Yeah. I'm just trying, I think I'm being conservative to allow the community time yeah. to, to fully engage in the process and, and you all, you know. I didn't want to come in here and say, well, I need a decision in a week's time. I've done the best I could to get to us to the place where we're at, yep. and I think we've done that. Um, I would just be amazed at the way, <laughs> no offense, but government works, that we could have something solid that I could feel good about going to town meeting in 2014 with really good plan, solid plan that um, I, I feel is, is viable and supportive. Okay. Any further discussion? Yes, if I may, Mr. Chairman. I think that this is a relatively important thing to the community. Would I like to see us yes, get out of the dam business? Absolutely. Would I like to see the drain put in there? and eliminate the dam, absolutely. And I don't want to spend $400,000 on buying that house. Mm -hmm. And the house should have never been built there to start with. Mm -hmm. And on and on and on. But here's what I think we should do. Yeah. It's a, it's town property. And it's been there for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I think the public deserves us talking about it in public, like public hearings. We want to get the public's input other than just tonight. I want to have more public input. I appreciate the engineering research. You two, you two gentlemen. 
I didn't say I supported your approach. I'm just saying I think we should hear, I, we should hear from the public, and I appreciate uh, your, your, all the work you've done for us tonight. But I think it's significant enough that we should have the public give us a lot of input. Maybe a couple of public hearings would be very appropriate. So in relation to asking for the extension, I'm 100% behind it. Okay, so we have a motion, we have a second um, to grant, um, to approve Keith going to DES and requesting that. All in favor? Opposed? Okay, 4-1, um, Woolsey opposed, motion carries. Um, beyond that, Keith, are you also looking for a decision let's say by the 28th or whatever that's the date you've thrown up given that you've now got the approval of the extension um, as to which approach the 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 board would like to to see no okay but what I am looking for is a consensus of the board recognizing that some of you may not be here in 2015 that's or whatever that, that there's a consensus of this board to put a warrant article on in 2015 mm -hmm. because I need to prove, show to the state, I need to demonstrate to them that we aren't just going to just say, okay, and procrastinate right. forever. So I need to say to them, to the extent that I can, that it is our intent to have a warrant article in 2015 right. to move forward. You can't get that commitment. One board uh, you, can't you, bind you, another. You, cannot, you, you, you may not be able to get a firm commitment, okay, based on one board being able to commit a future board. But, but I will make my comments. My comment is in terms of looking forward to 2015, I may or may not be here, but I don't think given the, the LOD, given the potential of an administrative order, given the fines associated, whatever, right. I think as that time yeah. frame rolls around, it doesn't matter who's on the board, I don't think we're going to have a choice from everything. Mm -hmm. that, but that, we that can't I make that commitment. I, I understand, but, but I, I think we, what we can say is, is it makes sense to us at this point in time, and that's essentially what I'm saying, is I, I don't think there's a choice. So, so does that cover so it then? That leaves you I'm aware. Sure. Um, so is a consensus something you couldn't just give a consensus? It's worthless. It, it, it One board can't it's bind like another. You a is, any, is, is, anybody, is, is, is anybody opposed to a warrant article in 2015? Oh, I'd like to see it in 2014. It's a rubber check. You can't, we can't say that. Is, is, I'm asking a question. Is anybody opposed to warrant article in 2000? Oh, I'm not opposed, but it doesn't mean anything. I'm not even going to I didn't say it was binding. That. I just asked, I asked if anybody is opposed. Is anybody opposed? I don't want to respond to that even. It's an irrelevant question. Okay. I'm not opposed. Can, then is it okay if I say as public works director I intend to present a warrant article Okay, let's go suggest, around the table. It, it is absolutely fine with me. Is it fine with you, Keith? Uh, Mike? It's what you should say to them is you're going to pursue a warrant article and then for the 2015 ballot, but you can't guarantee it because this board mm. is not and, and the board is supportive of that. However, the bear in mind that it's a different board by the time you roll around. The board can't make legal. any such I, commitment. I, I, and I think, they, I think they understand that. I don't think they're... Yeah, totally I think they would understand that in Congress, what I'm saying, and I agree with that. Bill? Uh, Roger. Fine. <laughs> yeah. Mary Louise? I said I did. the board can't make a commitment that far in the future. I want to see 2014. Forget it. Okay. Do I think you, you have a, the support of a majority. Okay. that cover it? Yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, gentlemen. Great job. Thank Whoops. you. If not, I'll, I'll, I'll just let's put our nose down and keep going. Don't okay. forget the other part too. Oh, you got it. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Keith, you had um, one other item: the snow plowing. Right. This is did. coming up to, to do this. Snow plowing. Yes. Oh, yeah. If they want the pond, tell them to buy the dam and they can control the whole thing. Well, they're not going to do that, huh? Okay. So Chris is going to address this uh, request. We uh, yeah. advertised and solicited bids 2013-013 uh, snow plowing and bid removal. Just like last year, we got one bid. 
Uh, we did get a bid from Jamco Excavators. Mm -hmm. uh, we did reach out to the bidder that we had in the previous winter. Um, I guess due to timing issues, he declined to submit a bid. Uh, we gave him ample time and through a phone call and a face-to-face -face meeting, but we did not get a another mm -hmm. bid. Um, we did check with other communities to see what they were paying, to see if these rates were in line. Um, and for the equipment that we want to hire them out for, they are in line. Uh, mainly, we want to assign uh, to Jamco Excavators, we want to assign a greater operator to handle the high uh, street Exeter Road route um, to do the growth. Uh, greater. We, we want to hire the loader with operators, same as last year, to handle uh, the high street parking lot in the downtown mm -hmm. area of the village. And uh, possibly uh, one dump truck with operator uh, so that in the event of a huge storm or needing to move a lot of snow, that would be a stretch. The other items were put on the bid, but we're not really uh, wanting to. Uh, exercise those at this point yeah. my reason for being here is of course that we don't have three bids yeah. uh, that we're asking to waive the process and yeah. recommend award okay questions who is Jamco Jamco ex uh, excavators they're currently our contractor doing the uh, sewer installation over on Auburn and Perkins they're out of Southampton New Hampshire oh. Local. Uh, Robert Watkins and ja his son Jamie Maybe Watkins. Watkins. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and they can easily pick up the slack, so to speak, doing all this in the wintertime for us from there. Normal. Yes, like for instance, the grader, the 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 backhoe. This is uh, I don't want to say surplus equipment, but they have a, extra equipment in their yard that's not committed to other tasks at this oh, okay. point. And they're in Southampton. They're in Southampton. And so would, what would they do, leave some of their equipment here then? They, we, we allow them to leave the grader, the loader, uh, and the dump truck if they cho so choose within the public works yard. Mm. And from your experience, you think the bid is roughly what you expect it to be, give or take a few dollars? We checked with some other communities and it was in line Close. with... Close? Yeah. Well, for instance, grader with operator, Exeter will pay $130 an hour. They bid 125 Oh, I the other thing is, has always been sort of free with the money, right, Keith? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm paying the taxes. Uh, <laughs> um, the other thing to mention is one of the initiatives that I've been trying to do is to hire some private contractors, and I made that case with the budget committee. Last year, we couldn't get a contractor. Even the one that we got for downtown wasn't able to do a route. So yeah. this allows us now to do two routes with a private contractor. Yeah. Good. You know, That's all I have. The other, other thing questions? with the greater is if we get into a situation where the storm gets ahead of us and we get a hard pack situation, let's say on mm -hmm. Lafayette Road, we can pull the grader off of this and instead of using tons of salt to remove the hard pack, yeah. have them peel it right off. Peel it off, yeah. Also move that we accept the single bid that has come in for this project. I'll second. second. I'll second for discussion. Okay, I have quite a few questions, but I can make them after the motions. We've got the motion then. Any I'll other second. questions from anybody I'll else? Second. So the motion is by Mary Louise, seconded by Mike. Other questions? Phil, Mike? Yes, sir. Mary Louise? Okay, I have a few. Um, the, the budget in this area is 20000 The, In theory, you only have to come before the board if you anticipate that the amount might go over 15000 on this, so you're anticipating then that there's a possibility of spending 15000 or more. The possibility, but the bigger reason was because right. we only okay. had one. You watched the Colorado weather forecast when there were feet of snow. I, you know, <laughs> frequentus interruptus. Um, we've spent about 6300 um, through this year on that line and obviously the, the first half of the snow plowing year was pretty bad mm -hmm. but basically that was just if I picked up correctly that was just a high street lot and they didn't do any routes in, right. in the downtown right, right. Mm -hmm. okay I, I looked at the bid and just I, I don't really I've never been involved in in the excavation snow plowing whatever business but I, I looked at this bid and I'll, I'll just read a couple of portions of sentences mm -hmm. and I looked at this and I said and I, I said to myself no wonder nobody's bidding on it, and maybe you could try and reconcile that for me. One is, no 
no way guarantee any amount of work. So when they bid, there's no guarantee of anything. Mm -hmm. um, they have to have their vehicles deployed in 60 minutes or less. Again, there's no guarantee of, of, of any work. They have to be on call 24 hours, seven days a week. But again, there's no guarantee um, of any work. And all equipment contracted for shall be dedicated to the town of Hampton for snow plowing and removal operations for the duration of the contract. So it looks to me like there's a heck of a lot of a, of a commitment here, but from a business standpoint, there's no guarantee. Right. And so that's mm -hmm. my interpretation of why we're not getting any bids. You, you are, you're, you're definitely on to something. <laughs> In that. <laughs> The Shaws of the Worlds, the Hannafords, the Walmarts all have a guarantee. Right. They pay them up front to uh -huh. have that equipment there. Yeah. Um, so that's why this particular contractor is, you know, in, in some respects, he doesn't have one of those. He didn't want to leave all of his equipment at a Walmart or a Hannaford. Um, you know, I know, for instance, SUR handles. Uh, the Hannaford up in Rochester and a number of other sites and their equipment is dedicated to it uh, knowing this contractor uh, this this grader wouldn't make him any other money this winter if it wasn't but 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 so. I get I guess what I, what I heard is you're agreeing with me and and I think the approach that we've taken has essentially pretty much assured us that we're we're only going to get the guys that that missed out on the other work my suggestion, it doesn't change anything in terms of, of this year or whatever, and I, I, I'm, I suspect I'm going to vote in favor of it, but what you've gone and done after the bid went out is, is provided the person with a couple of routes where they could make some money, Route 19 and Route 16, that you specified here, and it looks like you're anticipating, uh, even though you may not guarantee it, spending, you know, whatever, $12,000, $15,000, $18,000 or whatever. Right. So it would seem to me next year, particularly if it works out well this year on, on these routes, that you might, you know, do a little bit better if, if part of the bid, in addition to some of this on-call type stuff, guarantees those routes. Yep. Because it, that is an approach where we could have like a retainage of like $1,000 to say, by signing up, by bidding, you're going to be guaranteed at least a thousand dollars. And these routes, so these routes. so so basically, they right. know they've got the routes. It's just a matter of what they don't know is how much snow, and nobody right. likes that anyway. So, right. um, final thing is is these routes were apparently done in house um, this past uh, winter. These are the standard routes per our snow plan. Okay, plant. so we're going to spend this money with the contractor. Where's the the savings? I had actually pulled when I when the, we had ten thousand dollars in the budget um, two years ago, just ten thousand under that line item, and that was specific for the downtown parking lot in the downtown area. Mm -hmm. When I put increased it to twenty thousand dollars, I'm ninety percent sure that I had taken ten thousand dollars off of the other snow plowing account that's for overtime. I'm fairly certain I did that. Uh, Snow plowing account, your request for, was $80,000 for this year. Fred knocked it down. Now, this would have been two years ago that I, that I knocked it down. The, 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 over, the winter overtime account, 2013, was the first year. No, we've had a winter was over it? That was there in 12? Yeah. Yeah, I think it was. That's how we, yeah. 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 Okay. I don't have my budget yeah. book, but I, I'm fairly certain yeah. uh, that I had decreased that by ten thousand because I remember making that <coughs> argument. So so what you're saying is the savings do. is in overtime. <coughs> Correct. Right. Right. But but yet the overtime budget that was submitted by you overall DPW without going to a particular line, um, was was 42 percent higher than last year's budget. Fred knocked it down. It was 17 percent higher. And then when the board of select and played with the transfer station, it eventually brought it down to flat. Actually, I think it was a three percent decline. Mm -hmm. On the particularly on the winter, last year's budget was was like 46 thousand. You requested 80 thousand, and I think Fred knocked it down to like 49 thousand. Does yeah. that sound 49 to 50? Yeah. Right yeah. to you. So it, it the, the savings not showing on the bottom line, but I guess those are comments. Um, anyway, I do have a question. If you are all finished, Mr. Chairman. Yep. You're taking it out of the overtime budget, basically. As I recall. 
two years ago. Okay. So you'll be coming. In theory, the overtime budget will go down, and this will go up. Not for this year. Two years ago, when I put when I increased the line item from ten to twenty thousand. Okay. My recollection is that I decreased the overtime account by that same amount. Two years ago. Okay. So what happened last year? And I'm just trying well, to I'm just trying to follow the money right. here because for two thousand and. I, um, my memory doesn't go back that far. All I can okay. remember is this year, <laughs> well, we've over our overtime has really been through mm -hmm. the roof down there on the uh, snow removal. Correct. So if we don't have, if we take money out of the overtime account, and it's already going through the roof, it'll just go through the roof more. Now, I didn't take any money out of the over account account for 2014. I believe I took it out in 2012. Well, okay. Yeah. Well, my point is this: if we took it out. And it's already going through the roof like it did this last winter. I mean, I'm not criticizing. I'm saying we spent the money on snow removal. I'm just Mike, saying we're it did have, go through the we're roof. We're not going to cover that route, those two routes. We're not paying our employees overtime to cover those two routes. So what we can, by doing this, we're going to be eliminating some potential overtime over here exactly. by having him do this, having this contracted out. Correct. And, and you think overall we'll save. Not, n no, because that isn't how I have played this out from the beginning. Oh. Part of the reason that I'm concerned is that we have 22 plow routes, yeah. and they're all covered by town employees. Yeah. We have a hard time in certain storms yeah. finding the manpower to cover 22 routes. Okay. So by doing this, we have the advantage of having fresh bodies. So it wasn't it, – it, I'm not saying that we're going to – save money in the long run at all. I'm just <coughs> saying, if anything, it'll probably be a wash. Mm -hmm. But the advantage is that we're going to have better coverage because we're going to have other people coming in yeah. and Help we're not going to be spread thin. There's times that we cannot fill those 22 plow routes okay. mm -hmm. right. because we don't have the staff to do it. Okay. The other thing is safety. Last year, I can yeah. remember a storm that started at 3.30. Well, 3.30 in the on a Friday, whether or not they wanted to go home. Yeah. They Probably all went home, they February. came back at 4.30 or 5, yeah. Yeah. and Sunday morning, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. the, Probably that it February was the walking one with the grant crew. money. And, and, the, uh, okay, and, can we uh, take and, a vote on this? I just met, just Mr. Chairman, I'm still talking. Uh, so you're saying overall, then, we'd probably save on nothing else, employee fatigue, if nothing else. We're going to be saving on equipment. Okay. The other piece of this is that I'm trying to cut down on the amount of equipment that we need. So if we have 22 plow routes uh -huh. and we can um, uh, do away with two of those plow routes, so now we've got 20 plow routes, mm -hmm. that's two trucks, mm -hmm. two plow trucks that we could, in theory, if this works, mm -hmm. take off the inventory. Mm -hmm. Okay, got you there. And then the next question is, if we are running this really bad storm, can we ask these Jamco people to even cover another route other than just yes. the two? Yes. If that's that's yeah, going to be open-ended? Mm -hmm. okay. They've given us mm -hmm. prices for <laughs> dump truck with operator. Yeah. So let's say we blow a transmission on one of the max. Yeah. You can borrow maybe two or three if you need them. What I'm, a, all, I'm all set, Mr. Chairman. One of the issues with this is that they, they're looking for a road grader. The town hasn't had a road grader for four or five years since that mm -hmm. old champion yeah. was sold at auction. So if you get a severe ice storm or a hard pack, like Chris said, enough to peel it with. we haven't had any way mm -hmm. to, you know, how the road gets all potholy and mm -hmm. you just have to thump over it till it melts. Mm -hmm. They're using more salt to combat that, mm -hmm. and they don't have a grater to peel it with. Yeah. Mm. By, ha by having this typically Exeter Road, Route 27, from the Exeter line to Hampton, 1A mm -hmm. has been plowed with a road grader for years. Oh, it's always been done with a road grader. That was the state grader. doing that, though, right? No. No. Town of Hampton. <laughs> Town of Hampton. Nobody told you about the urban compact. <laughs> but, but we've always kept the road grader there. And <clears throat> the by having that on that route, you have the ability to take it if down through the woods or mm -hmm. Route 1 or any of the other roads that we plow, get that ice pack in the bottom, you can shift that and do something else with a truck or whatever. I think it's it, a good idea. It is because you only use a road grader for specific things. Mm. And we a don't lot in Kansas we used to plow the roads with too. 
Okay. So, so this had roads in Kansas. <laughs> we uh, can we take this to a vote. Yes. Sure. All in favor? Unanimous. And the contractors okay. aren't on overtime. It's a flat rate, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Moving on to the approval of minutes. First off, um, approval of the um, April 25th public minutes. I, I don't know if you have any explanation, Fred, as to why these April ones showed up. No, I don't. I, 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 I can fill in something. I got a call <laughs> from Christina earlier in the week asking if I had a copy of the April 25th minutes. And I said, I don't know. I wasn't the chairman. And I didn't take any minutes while Phil was the chairman. Um, but I found him. Ben had actually taken the minutes, oh. so I forwarded them to, to Christina. Yeah. So my assumption is is that somehow the approval of, of these minutes never got done. Yeah, happened. never got yeah. done. Both the and if you look at the public and the non-public public minutes, as you can see, is strictly a function of moving us into a non-public mm -hmm. session. Mm -hmm. So I would like to make a motion to approve the April 25th public that. minutes. Seconded by Mike. Favor. All in favor? I'll stay. He wasn't here. I wasn't Three, here. zero, Absent. two, with <laughs> with Bean and, and um, okay. Fluff abstaining. Okay. Whatever he's doing. April 25th, non-public minutes. I thought that's what we just voted. No, that was the public minutes of April 25th. Well, these are public. Yeah. Oh, it looks like All the public minutes okay. did on April 25th well, was move us into a non-public oh, session. Okay. 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 Somebody like to make a motion to approve the April 25th? I'm seconding your motion. Okay. I guess I made the motion. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah. I'm hoping. Okay. Were there, actually, were there actually some minutes taken yeah. for that? Yep. I forwarded those to Christina. Just the preliminaries. Just that we're going into here we are when public will go into yeah. Yeah. So I'm I'll, voting. I'll, you mean I second that? It's already been seconded. I seconded okay. Richard and I'm voting. Uh, and again, I'm voting too. this is on the non-public minutes. Yes. All in favor? Whichever. 401 would pluck abstaining. Can somebody Finally. send me a copy of that? I never got a copy of that. Please. Richard, thank you. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. We haven't had a time here, aren't we? <laughs> it's October. We're back to April. Okay. Oh, well. <laughs> October 7th. To never. October 7th, public meeting. Page 1. Ooh. 2. Three, page four, page five, page six. Page six, Mr. Chairman, may I? Um, about a third of the way down, this is Mr. Gingras described, it's missing the D, on described the analysis done on the sweeper. Everybody follow that? Yeah. Missing the D, okay. And down to the... Uh, Bottom at the very last line, it says Selectman Pierce made comments as follows: agrees with about Dearborn Avenue shame that shame trees were taken down. Need a check and balance. I think the remark should be check and balance. Mm -hmm. Okay, on page seven, at the bottom, second to last paragraph, there's a motion. Uh, the state's Chairman Nichols' motion that they limit the Selectman's viewing of change orders to thresholds. I think rather than viewing, um, hopefully what I said and what is more appropriate is required approval. Right. Still on seven? Yes. Yeah, on the, well, fourth little paragraph thing down, um, that my comments discussed the lack of adequate, sh it shouldn't be coverage, it should be cover for the vehicles. Okay. <coughs> Page eight. Um, I don't have a change in the minutes, but it, it caused a, a thought to pop into my mind, which I'd like to pass on to you, Fred. Sure. The um, situation last week where the trash was moved out a day each day, in other words, Tuesday yes. was picked on yeah. Monday yeah. and yeah. whatever. Um, I'm on all three systems, and, and I saw the Facebook notification to people. I saw the broadcast email notification, yeah. but I did not get an email. And I know I'm on that list because I've picked up some of Paul's others. I think the problem is, is that DPW... Is, is not yet up to speed with how to initiate yeah. the Emails. voicemail. And I, I think that's important because yep. it, my experience has been it, it, it's primarily the elderly that don't necessarily have the Internet that access, right. and um, that's where the voicemail um, is, is appropriate. But I no, said those that last the, week. You know, I signed up for email. I haven't got any. 
Well, they, no, okay. there aren't. You could okay. go two weeks without seeing one, Mary Louise. So no, I know, but I mean, at all. You won't ever get. But any. you know, that's <laughs> whatever we're doing. It's not effective because people were putting their stuff out on Wednesday, right. and some of them took it back in again because it didn't get collected. Right. Right. What, so what, we what still we got now have is the, the opportunity armor. when somebody says, "Yeah, I don't." Um, geez, I didn't know they were picking up at a day late. Right. My response is, uh, are you on the list for broadcast, email, or Facebook? Yeah. Avoid it when they say right. no, and you explain the capability. Yeah. And as we move down the road, more and more people will get on to yeah. it. And, it will and the sign out front said, next week it will be moved ahead one day. And when I came in, I went to recreation, and I said, hey, this week is next week. Change the sign. Uh-oh. Whoa. Uh-oh. Yes. Page 10. Uh, Mr. Chairman, may I uh, talk about this page? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Page uh -oh. 10? Uh-oh. Oh. Nine. Oh. Nine. 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 Uh -oh. Nine. You've got to keep up there, Mr. Uh, uh, Gerard. Oh, we did something terrible. <laughs> <laughs> something wrong. We're moving right along oh, smartly. Yes. Yes. It yeah. depends, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it does. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the uh, we had a discussion regarding the distribution of monies received from local government center. Right. And uh, I believe you had picked up uh, that the uh, subsequent to that, the uh, finance director had submitted a chart to the yeah. budget committee yep. yeah, yeah. Uh, with figures that you were having a little trouble. They were different. Different, yeah. Yep. And so um, having had some discussion with him about that, and I believe you did also, the, the, certainly the, the total figure is c correct of $357,014. Uh, nevertheless, as, as I understand it, the breakdown of that figure uh, is actually an estimated breakdown. Yeah. And so yeah. I would ask that the minutes uh, mm -hmm. reflect uh, in the uh, estimated. where it says estimated. Attorney Gerald made comments as follows. Uh, two lines down from that, uh, the, put the word, insert the word estimated in front of breakdown. Yeah. And thereafter, where... Uh, Mr. Chairman, you had made a motion as to how to distribute those funds. Mm -hmm. uh, two, uh, two of those figures, uh, not the one to retirees, but the one between the employees and the uh, and uh, what Revenues. the town would receive as mm -hmm. deferred revenues, um, it, it are, are also estimates. We, we've agreed on a formula on how to do that. So I would just go to the third page uh, that I've handed out, which was the, the original motion recommended. Which, which didn't have a, didn't utilize the breakdown. Uh, uh, and and uh, if, if that wording uh, can be substituted for uh, your motion so that we're, uh, it doesn't mm -hmm. bind the board to the exact dollars, yeah. I think that would be preferable. Does that change the minutes, or do we, are we just making a different motion this week, which would be on this week's minutes, that override that motion from October 7th? Uh, Technically, probably what you said, the latter. Yeah, yeah. because I mean, to me, it, it would not. It doesn't change the minutes. So right. Yeah. My my suggestion would be that we leave the minutes alone yeah. in that area, but we go through a motion now yeah. that accomplishes what you're looking to accomplish. Sure. Okay. Okay. So that motion, hmm, boy. <laughs> if, if you know what it is, it would make my life easy, but I can try and construct it. Do you want to sure, wait we finish the like. minutes, or do you want to interject it in the middle of the minutes? You, you can finish Let's the minutes finish if the you minutes wish. Then. Okay. Page 10. Page 11. I'll make a motion to approve the October 7th minutes Second. as amended. Seconded by Mike Pierce. All in favor? Unanimous. Okay. okay, then I'll be prepared to move that the board reconsider its September 23rd, 2013 decision to retain the $357,013.82 distributed to the town by the local government center in the into the deferred revenue account and instead distribute these monies as soon as possible in accordance with the formula agreed upon with the unions. I'll second that reconsideration. I hope that's correct. And therefore, correct. that you're substituting this motion for the one that appeared in the minutes right. on uh, October 7th. Mm -hmm. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? Yeah, thank you for catching that, Mark. Yeah, that's a combination. The chairman to. gets some credit for that. That's. Oh, Mike is never thanked. Never get thanked by you, Mary Louise. <laughs> <laughs> 
noticing a pattern here. Okay. Approval <laughs> of the minutes. Town manager's report. Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Um, the prep for the installation of granite curbing the galley hatch to regulate curb cover openings on the spur and the one kind of road have been completed. Mm -hmm. I did talk to the deputy director today. He expects that the curb will be installed the week of November 4th. Right. That's the latest estimate we have from the, uh, the contractor. So they better get it in before the weather goes. That's exactly what we told them. Yeah, uh, Frank, can I ask you a question on Sir. that while we're here? Um, if we put the curbs along there where that road is now, what are we going to do about the rest of that little area is, is there there's any curbing along any place else along there is there in that spot no in fact uh, my understanding is that the deputy director has talked to mr. Tinius yeah and mr. Tinius is going to install curb oh so. okay thank you thank you sorry for the interruption good. something they're going to work out in the spring uh, okay. to, to finish up good. that whole area Very good. So, okay. and I think that's a wonderful idea uh, the chairman asked me to address the uh, the municipal conference. The the my office is going to be closed November sixth and seventh, so the staff and I can attend the municipal conference at the Radisson Center in New Hampshire and Manchester. Good. And for those who are interested, and by the way, this is open to the public. You can always register. Um, contain workshops and sessions on a large variety of subjects from two from the 2013 actions by the legislature to the Supreme Court to mm. asset accounting, valuation issues on cable, library operations, the open meeting law, welfare, labor relations, mm. solid waste, fair labor standards, road maintenance, and many additional subjects. Mm. Additionally, state and federal departments will be present in the exhibit hall together with banking, legal, finance, assessing, engineering, construction, and just about every other type of vendor to provide services <laughs> to municipal <laughs> governments will be there trying to get us to spend money. Yes. Of course, we don't want yeah. to spend the money, right, but yes. we're willing to, to, to look at the projects that they have so we can learn some information. <laughs> it's uh, usually a very good conference, and, and uh, despite the fact that uh, the programs tend to be somewhat canned and yeah. almost to the point at some times of if you have a monotone voice, you have to fall asleep if you're not careful, but they, they are extremely interesting <sighs> and valuable. The issue of curb cuts for the galley hatch properties has been sent to town council for review and opinion on what limitations are present uh, to work out the exiting problems with the owners. Mm -hmm. and it's, 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 it is actually pretty involved, we're finding, because there are a lot of mm -hmm. individual things that have gone on there over the years. Yeah, thank you. The 350th uh, celebration, you've 75th. seen the final, re 75th celebration, you've seen the final report. The, uh, yeah. It's our intention to uh, continue to sell the yeah. materials so that we can reduce that deficit. Um, I did have a request from um, Vincent St. Paul Society to, to uh, ask people to, uh, there, there are free winter boots for, and coats for men, women, and children of all shapes and sizes that are available for those in need. The boats and boots and coats are given out uh, beginning Thursday, November 7th, from 10.30 to 12.30 at Our Lady, Lady of the Miraculous Metal Church at the St. Vincent de Paul building. Lafayette Road, that's the White House behind the parking lot. Uh, event sponsor is St. Vincent de Paul Society. So mm, those in need, please uh, yeah. take some time to go and, and uh, take a look at what, what there is. Yeah. Uh, the Church Street pump station continues progressing. Good. Uh, the contractors, uh, as you can see, are currently installing the concrete blocks for the upper, upper structural uh, divisions of the building. Uh, brick exterior is being uh, put up at the moment uh, in addition to the concrete block and there are in fact uh, subcontractors contractors working installing um, the electrical uh, fittings and fixtures uh, in the in the building and on the outside so Good. that that I think is where we're progressing quickly and they're doing a lot uh, we did receive, unfortunately, the bill from the county uh, <laughs> yeah. for taxes, uh, and it's a lot more than any of us want to pay, but it's $3,035,608, $80. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's in the works for payment. Yeah. Uh, we did receive today notice from the Health Trust uh, as far <laughs> as... Um, uh, yes. Uh, medical assurance is concerned, and we have projected 5% increase in the budget. It comes in at 4.3%, so there will be a reduction in that. Why, um, why was my cough by 0.7? Uh, 
Uh, <laughs> must have been a bad day of the calculator didn't have a good battery in it. I, I really I can't I can't comment on that one. Well, I mean, four that's, point. That's good news because yes, yeah. Exeter was forecasting a twelve percent increase. Uh, oh. well, that was they can have our other twelve percent if yeah. they'd like to have yeah. it. So what was the number again? Four point three. Four point three. Sir. Thank and you. That, that was uniform through everything. There was no increase in um, dental. Zero. In okay, what? That's that's the final number. That's the final number for the whole shot. Everything. They're all full oh, point three, right? A, down that's interesting around. because last time there was quite a bit of variation there between was. the POS plan and the HMO plan or whatever. Yeah. So but they're flat this year. Like, so can I keep this? Does, oh, please. Okay. Does that mean that they're one. not uh, padding their numbers to uh, take care of property liability? I think oh, they're out of pillows. Be nice, I mean, man. They're, they're never be nice. Come out I mean, with, I have no mood to be nice. They're, 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 they're never going to come out with what we forecast. The five percent was was Mike's forecast. No, I'm, I'm not with interaction yes. with the LGC, yes. and, and obviously yeah. he right. um, took a practical close. approach because yeah. he almost nailed it. Yeah. 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 One final thing, Mr. Chairman, and that is that uh, I know that uh, one of our members and and our council went to, had the opportunity to go and and uh, listen to the. Uh, the shell shock uh, presentation uh, for the PLT on rates uh, this past week. Um, considering all the things that are currently in operation with them, we are preparing at the moment uh, to produce bids for workers' comp uh, your workers' compensation to be out of the office by November 1st. Mm. We have requested the loss runs and the coverages. Uh, the premium exposures and those are on the way. We expect to have those tomorrow, mm. and uh, those bids will be prepared and run through town council's office uh, in preparation for uh, sending those out the door. I can tell you that uh, I was advised by the association. And I use that as sort of an umbrella in, in expressing the the costs and, and ratios here. Um, the Property liability trust has indicated to us that their rate is dropping from 280 to 230,000, uh, 280,000 to 230,000 this year, and the uh, assessment for the workers' compensation has gone from 1.31 to 1.91, um, as far as the, the costs are concerned. So we're looking at something in the order of about a five and a half percent decrease in the total cost of those two coverages, assuming. Assuming we stay with that particular vendor. Assuming we, we saw some numbers within the week that are, were a wash. Mm -hmm. We yeah. saw some numbers within a week that one was up, one was down, and I, I pulled my calculator out and it was within a couple of thousand dollars. Is yeah. something new coming? As of today, they told me that they're looking at a 5.5 percent rate decrease for the two of them combined. They, they told you, or you got an email? They told me uh, physically on the phone. Okay. So. This is coming from an outfit that needs to scrape up $17.1 million before December 1st? After that, scraping. Fred, okay. I do have a question. Yes, sir. Uh, questions you, for the manager. I, do, I have a question. Um, you're talking about going to finish off the 375th celebration? Yes. And right. Arthur Moody just indicated that he didn't know where all the goodies are. Is that We're going to find them. They're here. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's like, got them. I'd like to yeah. hear at our next yeah. meeting who's in charge of that. So <laughs> whether it's a town employee or whether it's a member of the it's, committee, yeah. if, if, if nobody's in charge, then I have no confidence that all these things that are suggested are going to be done are going to happen. That's like asking who's on first. Well, wasn't, yeah. Ar wasn't Arthur on the committee? He is on the committee. That okay. doesn't Let, mean let's, he knows let's what happened. Yeah. Well, Any other questions? We'll have an answer yeah. to that. Phil? I have a quick question. Are all the no through traffic signs posted? Did we ever get those in or those posted? No through traffic. No through <coughs> trucking. Trucking. No through no trucking. No through truck. Sorry about that. No through. We run out of money. Oh. Well, well, leaving up the ones that are there. No, we don't. We actually overdrawn the sign account. So. <laughs> um, so what? I, I, yeah, I, I have the same reaction. I, I've I've heard that when on one hand we're projecting a four hundred and seventy-eight thousand yeah. dollars surplus. The fact. Yeah. And, and I realize that that's not a hard number, and I realize no. that that you know. That, that that may go down, but uh, I have a suggestion. One of the things we said tonight is Mike's going to come in at the November meeting and, 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 and basically mm -hmm. have a list of what the department heads have in mind for year-end purchases. I think at that point we'll have a much better idea of what the overall bottom right. line number is, and I suspect for the cost of the signs we're probably in a position to go forward. I suspect so, too, and we've asked them for the cost of the signs. Okay. Anything else for the manager? No. I have a couple. Um, a little bit concerned on you're saying the town manager's office is closed on the 6th and 7th. Mm -hmm. um, people calling in with a problem that maybe can't 
wait until the 8th. So I think the question is more one of what is the message they're going to get, uh, I guess presumably Christina's number, 9295908, when they call in and nobody's going to hear it, be here. I, I would suggest that, that there's a message on her recorder, and we make sure that it doesn't fill up to the point where people get no message, that basically hour. says that, that, that um, your office is going to be closed on the 6th and 7th, and a number for them to call where somebody can respond mm -hmm. if there's something that's yeah. a matter of urgency that can't wait until the 8th. We actually have the, the, the phone checked every hour for okay. messages. Okay, who does We're that? We're not here. Finance does. Okay, good. Okay. We've got to put your phone number. Huh? We'll put your <laughs> phone number. I'm just going to forward mine to your house. Um, Automatic redial. <laughs> <laughs> on the, the bid that you referenced on, on the property liability trust stuff, yes, that sir. is going to be both then the workers' comp and the general liability? Yes. Okay. Good. And, and to whom are we sending that to? We have a list of vendors that we did two years ago. We're going to go to the same vendors. How, how many are there? There were, I believe, six. Uh, so, so there are six vendors that do business in the state of New Hampshire and the public sector for workers' comp and general liability. Yeah, some of them are private some companies and some of them are not. Two of them are not, Primex okay. and... Primex, and yeah. Right, okay. F final question is, we, I think it was the last meeting, we brought up the issue where the cost associated with the water line for the bathroom at the Church Street mm -hmm. uh, yeah. uh, parking lot bathrooms was overlooked, and, and we had asked for a, a cost to do that, and I assume it's significant in relation to the 2700 What What came of that? We're still waiting for the cost. Okay. We, we did, we did request it, and we, we do expect, expect it. expect that at next meeting. Yes. Okay. Yes. The other thing that I'd mention in, in line with that is I assume there's not going to be a lot more um, part-time labor in the parking lot account, there'll be some for the remainder of the year, and there is $6,000 yes. mm -hmm. in, in, yeah. in that account. We think we can accomplish it for what's there. Okay. Moving on to uh, old business. First item, acceptance of drainage easement on lot 2, Prevost 3 lot subdivision at 35 Huckleberry Lane, under RSA 41 colon 14A. Mark, did you want to say something on that one? Uh, yes. Here. Do you want the motion, Mark? <laughs> Why don't you let Mark see if he wants to say something, Mary Louise? Yeah, the board has uh, gone through the requisite uh, getting of recommendations in this regard from the Planning Board and Conservation Commission. You've done the two public hearings that are required uh, thereafter, spaced out appropriately, and now it's before you to uh, move to accept, if you wish, the uh, drainage easement, um, which is a uh, whose language actually has been agreed upon between. Uh, myself and uh, Attorney Ells. Uh, actually, um, I believe the drainage easement deed that you have before you for acceptance, uh, for Fred, Fred has uh, very wisely, I think, uh, requested that whenever we do these instruments, both for accepting of roads, yeah. deeds, and yeah. drainage easements, that actually there be a page for signature by the board. Yeah. That's so right. that it's noted that you are indeed accepting it, and there's no question about it. Yes. And so the language you'll see that you're voting to accept uh, is the agreed upon language, uh, and actually has been signed by the prevosts. Yeah, wrong order again. Somebody want to make a motion? I will move to accept under RSA 41 colon 14A the drainage easement over lot two in the Prevost three lot subdivision that was approved by the Planning Board on January 2, 2013, to be recorded at the expense of the Prevosts. We have a second? Second. Seconded by Mike Clough. All in favor? Up. Discussion? Are we going to be held totally harmless in this in any case of anything that we can foresee? We have a we we have um, in on paper yes. <laughs> yes. I like that. Yeah. That was a good answer. Yeah, on paper. Okay. We we have in the uh, drainage easement deed, as you will see, uh -huh. uh, it is agreed that uh, in the last paragraph. If, in the opinion of the Director of Public Works for the town, the owner of Lot 2 is not complying with the terms and conditions of the Drainage Swale Management Operation and Maintenance Manual, the town may seek injunctive relief 
that is getting an order from the court to have the work done by the owner, in which case the town's attorney's fees and costs shall be paid by the current owner if lot owner if the town prevails, or the town may attend to such maintenance and repairs and may invoice the current owner of lot two for the services which shall be promptly paid along with any attorney's fees and costs incurred by the town in collecting such invoice. So as I say on paper, we have the ability to uh, get an order from the court to have the work done or uh, do the work ourselves and, uh, and, and collect it. Um, pe people are, uh, the best, that's the best way I think we can do. Okay. First thing they taught him in law school. <laughs> Any further discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. Okay. 2014 Warren Articles. We have no time to fool around with Warren Articles um, tonight. I would just comment that oh, one of the yeah. things that we, we said, we ought to. one of the things that, I'm sorry, what was that, Mary Louise? No, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. Talking to myself. Um, one, of the, one of the things that we um, said was that the, if there were particular warrant articles that needed to be discussed, we would put them on the list under warrant articles and whatever. Mm. Um, you'll see one there, Article 20 or whatever. The reason that's there is I asked Christina, is there anything that had been added in terms mm -hmm. of language yeah. or whatever to this week's yeah. versus the past, and, and, and that is the one. So um, basically the only one that, that I particularly wish to discuss at all is Article 20. Um, I do have a couple of questions um, related to that. Um, one of the things that had come up in the past, and I don't know if, if, if Mike and, and Mary Louise are aware of this, but when we abate um, the, the, the sewer abatements to people who are not on the town sewer system, mm -hmm. um, it was indicated to us that, that based on you know, the statutes and what authorization we have, we only have the authority to abate the operating portion to those people and not the capital part portion. Mm -hmm. And I, for one, don't think that's particularly fair. If, if you're going to abate people mm -hmm. you know, that, that aren't on the sewer system, you ought to be able to do both. So my question, I think, to some combination is of, of Fred and Mark, is should Article 20 pass as written, given the Sletman, um, the authority to perform all duties and so on and so forth, if we choose to, um, after this article goes through and presuming it passes, do we have that authority on the capital side as well? I can't answer that for you. Can you tonight. can you look into that? And, sure. Okay. Good question. Um, my my s second question is. To the to, to the next article, which has to do with a water system development charge, mm -hmm. if Article 20 going forward were to pass, mm -hmm. okay, um, in the future, subsequent to that passing, um, is it necessary for the legislative body to either approve a water system development charge or any changes to the formulas and so on? Well. <laughs> it, it depends. Very no, it doesn't, actually. You could get back to us with both of those at the same time if you wanted to. I, I did want to say to you that uh, 149I is a statute that is a whole chapter that talks about the, what the mayor and aldermen can do. Mm -hmm. right. But at the end, there's a section that says that... Uh, the provisions are in force in towns that adopt same, and the selectmen perform the duties mm -hmm. of the, the mayor and aldermen. Right. Um, and so in, in past, the, the chapter had been in place in Hampton, mm -hmm. but then was right. rescinded. Right. Yeah. And so uh, as part of rescinding, something was thrown out with the bathwater. Mm -hmm which was yeah. the ability to yeah. levy right. upon persons whose drains enter the drain, enter yeah. the main drains, yeah. and receive a special benefit from them, their just share of the expense of constructing and maintaining or paying off capital debt or interest yeah. in constructing and maintaining okay. same. So I think the answer to your second question is that this adopting of this chapter would give the selectmen the ability to impose the charge you're talking about. Oh, okay. Because it references the mayor and the alderman and the alderman of the legislative body within a city. Yeah. Except, yes, uh, 
They are, but the, but the legislative body in Hampton, by adopting yeah. the chapter, would, uh, yeah. would give the right. selectmen that here authority. That, that authority. That's okay. why we right. paired the two of them. Any other together? questions nope. on this or any other warrant articles? Nope. No, not tonight. Okay. I think they're getting tired. Maybe that's a good thing. Um, final item under old business is a request from the chief that we mm -hmm. declare some contents that remains in the, the old beach fire station. It's got some fairly limited value to declare it as surplus so that it can be sold. I think everybody yeah. um, received yeah. the chief's yeah, email yeah. from uh, what must have been uh, Wednesday of last week or whatever. Um, would I'll somebody like to make a motion? I'll so move that we approve the chief's uh, authority uh, to uh, declare as surplus and dispose of whatever items he feels are suitable from Station One. Somebody want to second that? Yeah, I'll second that, but I have a question later on. Yep. Good now. Oh, yeah, well, not to do with this. Oh. oh. But, on, but on the fire station while we're here, go ahead. Okay, so we'll, oh. we'll get through the motion first. We're, okay. We're I would just add for the benefit of the public just this four items just so they know it's what we're talking about. An old station generator obsolete at this time, estimated value 500 to to 1000 dollars uh, a boiler about five years old, estimated value two thousand uh, dollars. A couple of water heaters six years old, two hundred dollars. I want to see if anybody yeah. <laughs> hey. buys those. And a compressor that's ten years old at two hundred dollars. So it's it's yeah. small stuff. Yeah. All in favor? Unanimous. Yay. Okay. My question was, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I was down to the village district meeting the other day, and uh, it was pointed out that the attic in the fire station mm -hmm. at the beach. It's them. all the way to the rafters full of papers. All the way. I, I to brought the, rafters. The, the, the chief. If we can make it real simple, the chief is on top of that. Yeah, yeah. he is. <laughs> After you told me that, I emailed. Well, I Richard talked to him too, but I just wanted to make sure we're the all chief, aware. Of it. We had an email right. sequence, and the chief is on it. Yeah. Well, no, I talked to him directly about that, but I just want to make sure we're all okay. aware of that there might be some historical papers or documents in there. Yes. They belong to the town, and there might be also some documents that relate to the village district, too. He's, right, the, and the chief is looking, working with, the, with the village district on yeah. that. Uh, so. Okay, um, I'd just like to bring up one other issue that, that Fred and I have exchanged some emails on. Um, Jay Diener has been involved with that. I copied Mary yes. Louise on it because she's the planning board rep mm -hmm. or whatever. That being the, the communication associated with informing um, people that are doing work in the wetlands, in yes. particular areas such as Place Cove or whatever, that they need to get the town's um, permission. Mm -hmm. it, it appears that historically that's been kind of a little bit of more of a verbal, yep. informal, whatever type of thing. I had mentioned to Mary Louise, I think she knew about it anyway, yeah. that there's a project in process to add a bunch of riprap essentially yeah. the last five or six homes at, at the north walls, end of the beach actually. on, More than riprap, on um, northeast yeah. lane yeah. and right. on top of that an observation i had made i'm not sure exactly what it was between the spring or summer there was some major major work mm. done there in the area of 1070 ocean boulevard up yeah. Yeah. to about the start of it that never came um before us as well so my concern on a practical level is yeah. is that we've got a policy now that basically unless there's an emergency prohibits people mm -hmm. from working on town land at least in in, yeah. in relation to the beaches on the summer mm -hmm. and and i'd hate to see a situation where somebody's deployed their equipment they're out there mm -hmm. and and we say you got to stop that that's just yeah. kind of yeah. ugly so my suggestion i don't know what I, i'd like to hear fred's thoughts based on the email exchange but my suggestion is 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 that we work with the planner and the planning board and 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 as a matter of, of 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 policy that that is included in the letter from the planning board mm -hmm. to the property owner mm -hmm. and or the contractor mm -hmm. um specifying in writing in those situations where there is work on town land involved that they have to get this mm -hmm. weapons approval. it's already been done the ones okay. at, at uh, on nor'east lane yeah when those letters went out they came to me for review they had nothing in them about the selectman's requirements for should, permits uh, on town property. Did the planning board approve that yet? I don't think they. No, um, no we we had a discussion with them, and we they were explain. It was explained to them that they had to produce two million dollar liability insurance policies per property. And also, I was explaining to them if they're going to put those stone stairs because these are really like these. This isn't riprap. These are big stone wall construction that they were going to have to have 
some arrangement for a railing but or the, the insurance board wouldn't, approve that wouldn't be permit? issued. Um, God. Don't, don't, there's a deck and then there's the, the riprap yeah. wall. It's not riprap. It's a big stone block a letter wall. Of approval. A letter was going out of here addressing those issues. Yeah. And there was nothing in there about coming to the selectmen. Mm. I intercepted the letter and had the item Good. put in about okay. coming so, to the So selectmen. basically, going forward, we can we can count on the huh. planning board letter. That will yeah. be in there. Yeah. Yeah. That being included when the okay. Okay. Including right. insurance, Fred? Because yeah. they but have to. Have to the insurance because that's something that you have to do here. Okay. When they come in yeah. for the, the, the thing is, yes. they've got to come before the board. Right. Yes. And, and Absolutely. what was going on, some people right. were saying, oh, geez, I didn't know that. Yeah. And yeah. it's pretty hard to hold them accountable yes. when it's just verbal yes. type right. stuff. They have to, in theory, Absolutely. they shouldn't be going forward with the project until they've got the level right. of approval from right. the right. board. Right. Okay, new business. Um, real quick, under old business, if I may, I'd like to move that we reconsider um, the uh, ch uh, change orders on the uh, bonded projects. I really think. I've been thinking about that since that vote, and I really think for bonded projects, especially after what happened with that $12 million infrastructure project, that this board should see any change orders on bonds. Okay, so is that a motion? Yes, sir. Okay, is there a second? There are a second for discussion. I don't know how much any, discussion any, we need. Yeah, we already discussed it. Can we well, take I a wanted, vote on this? We, maybe we want to discuss it. Why are you uh, pu pulling this up now? Because I... When you and I were talking yeah. a week or so ago, mm -hmm. I mentioned that I was still uncomfortable with that vote. And you yes, said you hadn't thought about it sufficiently. And we uh, limited, what, to 15,000 or something, yes. Mr. Yes. Chairman? Yes, yes. Right. Only those that are 15,000 or more or over 15,000 or whatever. And I, think, I think we need to reconsider that because um, the more I thought about it, then I was talking to Louise after that, and she made a good point. Do you yeah. want to do you want to set a threshold, or do you want to no. see the ones that are three hundred dollars and two hundred dollars? Any change and order. I think that anything to do with that probably should we could definitely be on the. the um, okay, Mary Louise. Consent agenda. Okay, so you want to see them all. Mary Louise has made the motion. Agenda. Mike seconded. All in favor? All opposed? Okay, I guess yes, we're back to Thank seeing two hundred dollars well, change orders. Well, you don't that's, know two hundred. Let's, let's move but on. But you need to Can see Can we it. just put those on the consent agenda rather than making a big to do about them at the meetings? No, I'm not going to talk about them. Why do you want to Just see them. Yeah. Okay, well, I want to see it's, them. It's, That'll do it. It's it's been decided. Let's move on. Yeah. Um, yeah. New business. Excellent. Um, no parking in tow zone, Winnicott Road. Um, do you need us? See the letter and the diagram. By statute, you regulate parking in public Yeah, place. I'll so move that we designate the no parking and tow zone on the southerly side of the roadway. That's yeah. the southerly, southerly side, side of yeah. Winnicott Road, uh, yeah. beginning at the spur from Lafayette Road for a distance of 178 feet. Do you have a second for that? I'll second that for discussion. I, I got a couple questions, if I may, Mr. Chairman. That takes it to, up to the end of the Galley Hatch property? Yes. yes sir. And that's it? That's yes. It. How about along in front of the bank no nobody parks there except for the pull-in area okay uh, and so the same with the the following property and the school property yeah. so okay the lawyer's office doesn't have a parking problem either okay no I but we were concerned that. as you pull around that corner uh, yeah stop cars from parking on the mm. outside of the of the, of yes. the fog line i got you that blocks traffic it's annoying everybody distances. yeah no they, they they've been tending to park all over the place there over the years and i'm not complaining we did ask the you. police department and they said that they would like to have it no parking tow zone bless you uh, yeah that's a good idea i'm voting yeah. i don't know about the rest yeah, of yeah. let's vote i'm ready all in favor unanimous okay it's an agenda. You ready for that? No, no, hold it, hold it. Oh, okay. Other new business. Oh, wow. um, I don't know if everybody received this letter. Um, it's addressed to me. Um, I've asked Christina in the past, and I have no reason to believe she's not doing it. Anything addressed to me goes to the entire mm -hmm. board, unless it's yep. like sealed in person. Right. At, at any rate, uh, it's not big stuff, but I want to get it out there. Um, basically, this letter has to do with the Regional Economic Development Center and basically what they're looking for the CEDS Steering Committee um, is looking for a representative um, from Hampton to participate um, on their steering committee. Let me see if I can get to some substance without reading the whole letter here. CEDS outlines our region's economic development needs and goals while addressing existing conditions, outlining a vision, creating an action plan, and provide 
mm. performance measurements. And it's an economic master plan for our region. I hope you had a chance to review the CEDS and it's that you enjoyed the new um, layout. I didn't. I just yeah. saw it. I got for, this letter. Two, this is this more week. make work um, stuff. And they don't Currently, have the money we are in the process of putting together a steering committee for the 2014 CEDS, um, et cetera. They're currently recruiting new members for the steering committee. It's important that our steering committee represent the entire region. Nominees must represent private industry or a business with their place of business within your community. So, Fred, do you know anything about this? I don't, sir. The, the letter came through, and, and I know mu as much about it as you do at this point. Why don't do, we, do we know who these people are? Do we or? care? No. Okay. Can, can no. we? You want to do I don't a think we're investigating. Yeah. 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 Not a problem. Oh, Happy to. Okay. And then we can ask for volunteers if we find out what it's for. Yeah. Right. Well, public. Okay. Um, if there's no other new business. Um, you get the signing stuff, Fred. Entertainment license under review. Ron Jillian's Italian Bar and Grill, 853 Lafayette Road. This is just consistent mm. with our yeah. process of putting them on there for a week yeah. um, prior to um, approving them. I'd like to make a motion to approve the consent agenda. The first item is a parade and public gathering. License the chain of life, October 28, 2013. The second is a request to use the parking lot at Joe Billy Brown Parking Lot, Place Cove, for the beach sampling collection by the volunteers from the New Hampshire Sea Grant and UNH on the October 24, 2013. I second the motion, and I'm voting in favor. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. Um, I have one other item before we adjourn. Mark, still here? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, I'd like to make a suggestion that we move forward the starting time of next week's meeting from 7 o'clock to 6 o'clock. And my reason for suggesting that is that the Red Sox are into the fifth game, presuming there's not a, a sweep. Monday's game may be the deciding game of the series. Um, I personally would like to watch it. I think there's a lot of other people, Channel 22 people, people who have appointments with the boards. It starts at 8, and by starting at 6, I think we have an opportunity to um, get through that. So I'm throwing that out there for I make, comment. May I make a suggestion? If you are so enthused about the Boston Red Sox, why don't you run for councilman in Boston? If you're a resident in Boston, and do oh that exactly. God. They'll give you the day off. Mr. Chairman, may I please? Uh, yeah, please, please. The, uh, the hour is yeah, late. I, I support that. This is uh, Red Sox country. Uh, it's Boston strong. Uh, I support your motion. I will make a motion if we run anywhere near game time to adjourn, and we can come back later after the game and re-adjourn. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I will attempt, if we decide to do this, to keep the agenda at a level where it appears that we can get through it um, in that time. And I will comment to all of you, we have ten more meetings before the end of the year, and we've got a lot Thank to you, do. Mr. Chairman. Okay. Mike, your, your feelings on that? I don't care one way or the other. Is that okay with you? Yes. Okay with you, Mary Louise? Whatever. Okay. You're going to have a motion on that or you're going to vote on it or what? Okay. Uh, Phil, I believe you made a motion. I will second that motion. All in favor? I will not be there. I won't. I yeah. can't do 6 o'clock. Oh, no, no. I understand that. I cannot do 6 o'clock. Yeah. It, it's almost impossible for me to make it here at 7 o'clock. And if somebody thinks I'm not being patriotic, no, they can fine. take that and deposit it someplace. Uh, no, I, I think that any time yeah. we are doing our public elected job, Mr. Phil Bean, we need to be here. Right, but it's uh, World Series and I'm watching. Okay, I'd like to make Go a ahead. motion. Go ahead. You can do I'd it like any time you want to. to adjourn. At 10.15 p.m. And Is that I will a second? second? All in favor? We're adjourned. Now we've got, yeah. We've got a nod.